Happy Friday, everybody! Cheers, Super Saiyan Joe Coop. I'm glad you're here, motherfucker. Let me hit it for this motherfucker. Cheers! I want to have the world, the world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft. <laughs> I'm smoking out of my lizard tonight. Here, lizard, 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 lizard. Remember that shit from the 90s? <coughs> oh, shit. I just blew up the mic there. I'm sorry, everybody. <coughs> it's been a while since I hit the lizard. Forgive me for that. Happy Friday. Hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, cheers, Super Saiyan Joku. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I got a, a, a service, public service announcement. We are probably 20 days until we finally have a live stream on our original channel because currently we are broadcasting from the Emergency Underground Broadcast channel. And the next pay-per-view, I think, will be an AEW. Uh, double or nothing at the end of this month. Hopefully, we'll watch it here on the Illegal Underground Broadcast channel. Subscribe to that one. We watch pay-per-views. Wrestling pay-per-views. Uh, just so you know. We might even watch the Tyson fight. We don't know. We're debating. Either way, those are the three current fucking channels that we have right now. And shit. Uh, as far as tonight's show, we are going to review fucking uh, the X-Men 97. Uh, I also got a review of ARC, the animated series. We got a lot of DC ads for you, mostly James Gunn, and uh, more Marvel spoilers and leaks and rumors, and of course, we can't finish without your celebrity ass, so get ready for that shit. It's all coming up for you tonight, but we did get uh, some comments tonight, and, um, and one of our videos, two of our videos went viral, but only one of them had a lot of comments, uh, so let's get to it on that shit. Here we go. Here are my social medias. Twitter is at Cinnaman665. And uh, Instagram is at The Underground Broadcast with underscores between the words. And a TikTok, which I'm not even fucking bothering with it anymore because they censor me all the time and shit. It's at The Underground Broadcast. So, so fuck TikTok. Don't even go there. Don't even subscribe to that ass. The motherfuckers, they mute my, my, my videos all the time and shit. So uh, we're not even paying attention to that shit. Just so you know. Uh, but whatever you do, send me on your social medias. I will post here. Just like Super Saiyan Joke, who sent me this earlier. Uh, he said, They say April showers brings May marijuana flowers, but this nugget hasn't destroyed yet, defrosted yet. Oh, hey, you know, Joku. It's called Snow Cap, and that's no cap. No lie, when I'm trying to stay high, I saved this for Friday night show at the Underground Broadcast. Cheers, Mother Flowers. Hashtag. Live. Hashtag THC. Hashtag Mary Jane. Hashtag Chronic. And hashtag Smoke Weed Every Day. Uh, Joku, don't smoke that shit at all. I'm stopping you right now. When you guys see frosted weed like that, that's mold, motherfucker. Unless you bought that from the store. <sighs> if you bought that from somebody off the street, don't smoke it. That's mold. I had the unpleasantness of smoking something that was frosted, not understanding that it was mold, and I had heartburn for days, and my lungs hurt when I breathed, and I didn't understand why. And uh, it was it's the weed. Uh, so uh, be careful. If you bought that at the store, then it's fine. But if you fucking bought that from the fucking brown person next door to you, throw it away. It's just really old moldy weed and you do not 
want to be smoking mold. Trust me, I've done it, and it's not any good. 25 bucks for that one nugget. Damn. Yeah, me too. I keep getting ripped off from the brown people here in my neighborhood. I'm trying to find a new motherfucker and shit. I don't know what, what's wrong with these browns. Why the motherfucker don't want to hook another motherfucker up? You know, it's like you just want to screw another brown person, motherfucker. you like, we're all the white drug dealers, the honest, white, hardworking drug dealers. They're not even here anymore. Got these con artists out there trying to rip you off and shit in the neighborhood. All the motherfucker just wants quad quantity over quality because times are hard here in Joe Biden's America. We gotta make more, run, make a more for our dollar and shit. You know, I wanna, wanna, whatever happened to the dollar menus at the fast food restaurants? They're all gone. Everything's two bucks, four bucks, five bucks. Fucking a McDonald's combo is almost twenty dollars in some states. It's fucking ridiculous. Fuck you, Joe Biden, and your piece of shit economy. Son of a bitch. We need to get that son of a bitch out. A few more months and you're out of here, old man. You're fucking up. Cheers, Joku. Thank you for sending me this ass. As long as it's legit. As long as it's legit, Joku. We don't want you getting sick on us and shit. Thank you for sending me that. Uh, Gomer Kyle was not here right now. Sorry about that. I dropped my lighter. Uh, Gomer Kyle sent me this ass. Oh, yeah. And it's Gomer. Wearing a, a Cody Rhodes, let me rewind it. Wearing a Cody Rhodes, claim your kingdom. A Cody Rhodes, the new nightmare and shit, the American nightmare. That's a pretty cool, dope uh sweatshirt. I, it looks like it's raised, like kind of fuzzy and shit. It looks warm. Of course, this motherfucker lives up north, so I quit. You know, I have winter clothes that I use like once one week out of the whole year and shit. You know, because it's hot over here where I'm at and shit. And we only get like one or two weeks of winter, which is fine with me because I hate fucking winter. I hate being cold and shit. Uh, I hate it when it's hot too, but you know, I'd rather be hot than cold. So I'm going to say, I don't want to be freezing my balls off. You can't even get a boner like that. Anyways, cheers, Gomer. Thank you for sending me this shit. He also sent me a couple more pictures. I'm about to show you all motherfuckers right here. But he sent me some pictures of his pop collection and shit. Here's a few of them. We got motherfucking... Uh, Peter Venkman and Sergeant Slaughter. That's badass. Winston and Os Oscar. The Oscar looks fucking badass, bro. Lenny uh, from Waterhead. Cody Rhodes. He's got Elvis Presley. Rob Zombie. Uh, Ellis. What? Rick? I don't know who that guy is in the middle. Oh, it's Elvis. It's Elvis. Jailhouse Rock. That's what it is. Um, and Dude Love. Oh, that one's fucking sick. The Dude Love is badass. Uh, then, uh, Pika. Ronnie, I don't know where that's from. Ash from Evil Dead and Dusty Rhodes. Who's that one in the corner? I don't know. I don't even remember. I don't even recognize that symbol. Pekka, Ronnie. I don't know who the fuck that is. That's a cool pop. He's got definitely got more pops than me. And actually, I am stupid because I opened all my pops. Uh, he also got a Rocky Balboa and a Batman. And then he got this bat a badass Batman one with a comic book inside of it. Hey, Gomer. I had to show off. Because I actually have that actual fucking comic book. That's a, a Todd McFarlane uh, comic book that he drew um, uh, uh, for DC. When... When he, when he, I think, he, did he work for DC or Marvel first? I think he worked at Marvel and then he went to DC. I don't remember. I, he might have been at DC first before he went to Marvel. Uh, or vice versa. I don't really remember. But anyways, I just wanted to show off real quick. See, I have the exact same Batman comic book uh, by Todd McFarlane. And then I have when he, when they went and started Image and he did the exact same cover from the Batman with Spawn. It's the exact same one. That's so badass. But I also have the Amazing Spider-Man with Venom that he also did the cover and then when he did the spawn he did the same cover ah fucking uh, oh Gomer's here cheers Gomer <laughs> let me hit let me hit your intro for you Gomer I didn't see you there man oh shit I forgot the new keyboard I gotta press a second button for this what's your name scumbag Gomer Pie Private Pile I'm gonna give you three seconds to wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you! One, two, three!
Shazam. Yeah, so I just wanted to show off, Gomer, that I also have that fucking... I actually have that comic book that you showed and shit uh, right there. Oh, fuck, I'm pressing all these buttons and opening up all these windows. Uh, let me just... There we go. Uh, but yeah, show you that. And then uh, another thing that Gomer showed here... Uh, he showed a, another one right here. Oh, Donald Trump and Richard Simmons. Oh, yeah. You know, the motherfucker, he just needed to put Polly Shore there. Do you have a Polly Shore fucking uh, uh, pop? <laughs> I open all the mines. I have a Raiden, Venom, Carnage. I have the Fiend, which I kind of regret opening because I bet you that one's worth a lot of money now. I fucked up. I have uh, the, the Super Scroll with the four powers of the Fantastic Four. I have Mysterio. I have Korg playing a video game like from Thor. And I have uh, Negaduck from Darkwing Duck. And then I have the Fortnite Skeleton. Uh, and I have the Xenomorph Alien. Uh, and then the Dragon Ball ones you gave me, Joku. Those are all the pops I have. But the Dragon Balls, I didn't open them. I did open all the other ones, though. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. That's just the way it is. Uh, but I don't know. Trump one's fucking badass on that Richard Simmer one. This Richard Simmer one's fucking cool and shit. Uh, he also sent me a picture of his 2024 Trump hat. That's fucking badass. That's like real leather right there. A little leather patch on there. Trump 2024. Everybody around here is carrying that shit. I mean, not not specifically this, but everybody's got flags and everybody like everybody brown people everywhere. They they're gonna vote. I mean, here in my neighborhood. I mean, you know, I live in the hood. Or I'm the lightest skinned person in my neighborhood. I'll just put it like that. And everybody in my neighborhood's voting for this asshole. And everybody's tired of being poor. Everybody's tired of fucking gas, eggs and cheese, and everything costing too much. We don't even have enough money to buy enough drugs and shit. Nobody's getting raises. And people are getting fired left and right. Fuck you, Joe Biden. You son of a bitch. Four years, you ruined the country more than Obama, more than Bush, more than Clinton, more than anyone's ever in the history of the United States of America. You idiot. Fucking dumbass old man. Pedophile. Anyways, cheers, Gomer. Thank you for sending me this fucking Trump shit. It was pretty cool. Cheers. I'm going to hit it for you guys. That's for you motherfuckers because you know what it is when we do what it is that we do here on this channel and shit. Uh, but let's get started with the fucking comments because like I said, I think we went a little viral with one of those videos. And by viral, I just mean the video got more than the usual 10 views that we get. You know, because nobody watches this fucking channel. Anyways, let's start with the comments. Uh, culture war bandit this is canceled for life he says oh uh, before i read his comment let me explain because last week i don't know my internet was fucking up and the avatars stay stuck on the screen as i scrolled or whatever and so it had dog on funny's avatar on it and i thought it was him i thought they were making fake accounts and shit getting us more views and clicks which i encourage everyone to make four fake accounts and subscribe to us uh just to get us up there Anyways, uh, no, he, he replies and he says, hey, I'm Culture War Bandit 99. YouTube is effing up. I only have this account, son of man. Cheers, bro. YouTube is bugging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doug and Funny actually replied to him, but he replied later. So uh, it's kind of a little bit of the same. So I'm just going to read the other comment that you left Doug and Funny later. Uh, I fucked up because uh, because I, I'm all thinking about last week and this week and I forgot to play Culture War Bandits uh, Cancel for Lives intro. So let me play this guy, this racist motherfucker's intro for for him. What do you call a hundred black men buried in the ground up to their neck? What? Afro turf. So another. How do we know that Adam and Eve uh, weren't black? Oh. You ever try to take a rib away from a black man? Okay, what, 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 are, what are three things that a black man can't get? A black eye, a fat lip, and a job. I told you I'm gonna kick this boy. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. I wonder what they did. You racist. Oh, yeah, that was for you, Culture War Bandit. You canceled for life, you dick. All right, let's go to the next comment. Oh, yeah, cheers. You see, I'm a little off this today. I gotta start drinking some more. Maybe I'll get back in the zone once I'm drunk. 
All right. Oh, yeah. It's none other than Missinix. Mick Mixinix. Mind cares. <laughs> It's been a while since this guy left a comment and shit. He left it on the Blade Joins the Deadpool video, which is, by the way, that's the one that, uh, that went viral. Everybody wanted to see this fucking video and shit. Uh, this, uh, this clickbait and making the, the thumbnails lie and the title is working, you guys. Anyways, he says, uh, cameos can be cool. Cameos are going to be the best part of this fucking movie. I promise you. This movie's littered with everything we actually wanted the Doctor Strange movie to be like. But Doctor Extra Strange movie only literally gave us the Illuminati as cameos for a little bit. And then that's it. There was no multiverse of madness. It was just Doctor Strange goes to one fucking universe and meets five different people. That's it. Fuck you. That movie, fucking Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, should have been this. Should have been just filled with crazy versions of other people. Just the nonsense. No, they, they, they dropped the ball so bad with that shit. Oh, well. Milsonic's mine. Yes, cameos are going to be amazing. And this movie's going to make a lot of money. That's all I'm going to say. Cheers, motherfucker. All right. Oh, minus color. So this guy's a fucking Aryan guy because he's just like white. When there's no color, it's only white supremacy. Um, Let's hope it's not, but that's just what it sounds to me. Um, Hit on the Tory spe spelling. Where's diapers? It says the, the host looks worse. Well, yeah, of course I look worse. I'm not a privileged, entitled, multi-millionaire who my daddy was fucking born rich and shit. So I can't afford lip fillers. Uh, uh, fucking uh, uh, liposuction. And fucking injections. Collagen injections. Fucking facial reconstructions. I can't afford none of that shit. If not, I'd be looking better in Tori Spelling and shit. Of course I look worse. We all look worse than her because none of us have the money she has. God damn it. Imagine if I had the money, I'd be looking like Jeffree Star right now. Woke as fuck. Woker than this, motherfuckers. One of these days, I swear to God, when we get some money, we win the lottery and shit. All right, we're in a professional studio, a, a, a white guy, white, all white staff, sober, Mormon, white staff, running everything for me when I drink and smoke and yell at them, obscenities and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the way it's going to be around here. Minus color. Maybe you should apply when we have money. I would hire your ass if you're white enough. All right. Cheers. Minus color. Thank you for commenting. I gotta ring the DJ horn for you. All right. All right. Let's move on. It's getting too crazy here. Oh, Rocco. Fuck my life. The Satanist. Let me go ahead and hit it for this guy. And I actually have all these numbers here. Uh, uh, cause I, 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 I fucking went ahead and put all these. Oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. Rocco. Cheers, Rocco. And Rocco's on the blade. He says, damn, Wesley Snipes looks horrible. I hope he's okay. Cheers, son of man. Hashtag. Live. Um, you know, I was thinking the same thing too. Because, like, when we first... There was a video that Chadwick Boseman posted after he filmed, um... Or when he was... A, a little bit after he filmed that 21 Bridges, which was sort of almost his last movie. He filmed 21 Bridges, and then the last movie he filmed was Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. A little bit after, he posted some social media shit. And he looked pretty fucking skinny and bony. His face, I mean... And everybody's making fun of him, and this guy's not eating right, and all this ass, and he thinks he's T'Challa, and all this shit, and he's losing weight. Um, fucking, and then, and then he died. So, that's scary. Oh, no, Wesley Snipes, you know, he, in that picture, I should, and that's a real picture, I know, fucking, uh, we, we alter and doc doctrine a lot of images here. Uh, but that was a real picture that I got from the internet, some kind of, sh uh, 
thing that he went to, celebrity thing he went to a few months ago. So that was recently this year. That's the way the motherfucker looks. Um, it couldn't have been more than a few months, so it's kind of scary that he looks like that. Fucking Kevin Feige fucked up. He's 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 getting all these old dying stars to come back and make him some money when he should have done it fucking five, six years ago. You idiot. You're taking too long. This COVID shit fucked everything up. Dumbass. Uh, anyways. Cheers, Rocco. I'm going to smoke for you, motherfucker. Pekka Rain was the... the oh, oh, yeah, because I was asking about the pop the pops earlier. Uh, Gomer finally responded. Pekka Rain was a goalie for the Nashville Predators and one of my all-time favorite athletes. Uh, I think that's hockey, because I don't know what the fuck any of that is. Cheers, Gomer. Unless you're talking to me about wrestling or real sport. I think I know nothing about nothing else. I'm just going to tell you the truth. Cheers! All right, all right. Let's 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 move on. Oh, another new person. On the Wesley Snipes video, like I said, we got over 400 views. Oh, yeah. We're moving on up, fellas. He says, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Zoo, 7398. Uh, they, because we don't know what they identify as. Just the letter B. Um, you look like a clown. Hard to pay attention to what you say when you look when you like a clown. Well, I mean, if you fucking are trying to pay attention because you, for whatever reason, uh, you didn't read the intro, then that's your fault, you dumbass. And your name's racist. Who the fuck puts a zoo in Brooklyn? That's the most racist thing in the world. It's like me going to fucking the suburbs and making a KKK club in the middle of it. And shit. You dumbass. Uh, but cheers. Thank you for commenting, Brooklyn Zoo. You got us a lot of views on this fucking video and shit. Cheers. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next comment. Oh, also in the Wesley Snipes cameo in Deadpool. Somebody named Ob Obscure Obscura Pit. Obscura Pit. Obscure a -a -a Pit. Because there's two A's. Obscure a -a Pit. I guess that's what he means. OBS Corp Car Pit. Corp Pit. I don't know. These names are dumb. He says. Wow, what a weird dumb channel. Yeah, well, you're the dumbass who clicked on it. Cheers! <laughs> and you got us a view too, so thank you for that. Uh, uh, I don't even know how to say your name for fuck's sake. That's gonna bother me all night. I'm not gonna lie. It's got some stupid little coin or some Canadian coin. Is that Canadian coin? Some foreign fucking monetization right there on his shit. Goddamn foreigner. I'm still a tearing to you, you dick. Cheers. All right, all right, let's move on. We respect foreigners around here. But when you motherfuckers come over here and start talking shit about America, fuck you. Oh, well, anyways. On the Deadpool cameo video, Kyle Carraway, 8662. He says, what the fuck is on your face, dude? Oh, this guy doesn't know what I'm wearing. This guy must be one of these fucking, uh, one of these non-binaries that was raised by two homosexuals. It's okay. Let me explain it to you. If your parents ever let you go outside, you're going to run out. You're going to run into a different uh, gender, even though your parents probably told you there is no such thing as a gender. But they're going to be a different gender with long hair and big boobs and no, they don't have penises. Um, and they pee sitting down. Um, some of them who, who who enjoy, I don't know why they wanna they wanna wear makeup, is what it's called. Um, and you're also gonna run into some men that like to wear makeup. It's not just women, and some non-binaries just like yourself, they might wear makeup. You don't never know. You need to get out more, motherfucker. This specifically is called cover girl and shit. Alright, I also do my nails and shit in case you don't know and shit. Uh, I've been starting. I, I, I've been starting trends everywhere I fucking go. All right, because I've been going a lot to the wing stop and shit. And now all the motherfuckers there are are getting green, green because they see me. Hey, sir, those are cool. 
And I'm like, you're goddamn right, you're cool. I'm gonna go fuck five bitches with these on. And now they're all painting their tail, their nails and shit. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm starting trends and shit. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 fucking uh, it's Cover Girl, all right? It's pretty expensive too, but it's good because you know what? I used to drink beer and shit, and that that cheap shit I used to wear was smudge and come off, and then every time I had to take a break every 15 minutes to go put on some more makeup because it would smudge off with the beer and the smoking and shit <clears throat> melting under all these hallucinogen and fucking LED lights that I have here for the pod broadcast. But luckily with Cover Girl. It stays on. Oh yeah, cheers, cover girl. <laughs> and cheers to you too, Kyle Caraway. Oh yeah. All right, let's go to the next one. Oh, Rocco, fuck my life again. He says, "Holy fuck, son! This video's going viral. Plus, all the woke simps are showing up to comment. LOL, cheers." Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm telling you, a lot of weird comments we're getting. <laughs> what is he? What, 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 what is he wearing? Lipstick? What, 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 why is he talking like that? Look at you idiots! If you just pause, rewind the video to the beginning and pause it, and be intelligent for one second and read the warning! You might understand what's happening around here, you dumbasses. Goddamn children, don't understand. Anyway, cheers, Rocco. Thank you for being one of the smart ones, motherfucker. <sighs> Beer is good for the soul. Um, Amber and Y9QU. I don't know what that says. On the Kenan Thompson's Dan Schneider connection. It says, try watching a better schedule for Nickelodeon's main block. By Evan Rosman. I got a notification for this ass. Um, and I fucking... I, I, I copied and pasted. Because I, I was like, holy shit, there's a video out there. Because, you know, I talk about Keaton Thompson. And then the, the, the way he's uh, connected with Dan Snyder and the molestations and shit. Um, and so I was like, this guy, they, there's a video out there. This Evan Ro Rosman is fucking exposing Keenan Thompson. So I fucking copy and paste it and I find it, you know, the, the channel by Evan Rosman. And I find this specific video, this fucking Amber is talking about from New York and I click on it. <sighs> and I think I wasted 10 minutes of my fucking life. I mean, I, I and it's my fault. I was high and drunk as fuck. And so I'm there listening to the very end, waiting for the punchline. This motherfucker goes on, and I don't even know if this is a recent video. Is I mean, cause I don't know if Nickelodeon still exists, if they still do cartoon. But he, this guy is saying this is the current cartoon block that they have from Monday to Friday, and he lists the cartoons and the times they come out. And then he's getting mad because SpongeBob has more than an hour than everyone else, and he's complaining and saying that they should have these shows instead of SpongeBob and all this. And I was just like, "Fuck you, Emperor." You made me click on this and waste 10 minutes of my life. And even worse, I gave Evan Rosman another view on that piece of shit, boring ass video that he actually has more subscribers and more views than this goddamn channel. <sighs> Amber, you sly motherfucker. You got me. I'm gonna cheers to you, you bitch. <laughs> I gotta start being more uh, tricky, like the way this person is. You know, you go to another channel, like I'll go to heavy, uh, I should go to like new rock stars or fucking, or even uh, Kevin Smith and on the comments, try watching this video by Son of Man or the underground broadcast. And then we'll get more clicks like that. That's what I need to do with them motherfuckers being smart. He fucking annoyed the shit out of me for 10 minutes. I was high and I was like, is, it, is there a joke at the end of this? After 10 minutes, I was like, fuck you. I can't believe I watched this ass. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, fuck you, Amber. We're moving on. Spent a lot of time. I was just really mad because I was high. I was here one, uh, what the like Tuesday night? I don't even remember. I was all high. And I'm like, oh, look, somebody sent me a comment. Let me see what the fuck they're talking about. God damn you. Let me move on. 
on the Kenan Thompson, Dan Snyder's J Hart W. He says, ha 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 Hey, son of man, what is your beef with Kenan Thompson? Sh shit is funny, though. Um, I don't have no beef. I love Kenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell. They're fucking great. I love Kenan and Kel, and I love them and all that. And I think Kenan Thompson is probably the, one of the, the last funny people that's on the cast of Saturday Night Live. There's a, Everyone sucks. There's so many people that suck. I mean, he's there's probably like three or four motherfuckers that are, that are carrying the whole show. And he's one of them because he's funny as fuck. Um, that shit about that they did, the cold open, where, where he was talking about that he supports uh, all the... He says, like, I support all the protests at the colleges and shit as long as my daughter's not involved. And he's like, you have any idea how much college costs and this and that? And he's like, I was like all laughing and shit. But I don't like Saturday Night Live. I don't got no beef with him. I just think it's funny how Dan Schneider was around when this motherfucker was a Nickelodeon. He says Dan Schneider's a good guy, never molested him or nothing like that. Never showed him any porn, pull out his dick, nothing like that. Never made him walk on eggshells, step on dog shit, nothing like that. Recorded with his feet, nothing like that. Get. Keenan Thompson's rich and famous. All these other kids got the thumb in the ass. And they're not rich and famous. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Anyways, cheers, Jay Hart Thrall. Thank you for commenting. Give me the DJ horn, son of a bitch. I think I've seen you uh, comment before. Cheers. <laughs> Alright, let's move on. Oh, Gomer Kyle. I'm playing your intro again, Gomer Kyle, you son of a bitch. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm going to give you three seconds to wipe that stupid-looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. One, two, three. Shazam. Y'all see? It's doing it again. I had to refresh it because it changed your avatar, Gomer, to that other guy's. Uh, It's so fucking weird. I don't know if it's YouTube or what's going on. But here, now your avatar is back. It was another guy's avatar. It's like if I scroll up or down, the avatars get stuck or something. <laughs> Anyways, Gomer says on the Richard versus Polly Shore video, Polly Shore is making a what? Did you say Bile Dick? Uh, this comes from the idiot who made Bile Dome. Ha ha ha, cheers. Hashtag. <laughs> Live. Hashtag. Live. I haven't figured out what to do with that. Sorry, Gomer. Stop doing that shit. <laughs> Anyways, um, I I'm not gonna lie. I have all the Polly Shorts movies. I have Biodome. I have Son-in-Law, I have uh, Son-in-Law, I have fucking, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, jury Duty, I have In the Army now, I have um, Encino Man, oh yeah, I got a lot of Polly Shore movies, I fucking love that shit back in the day, he was legit, motherfucker, you know, he like the first one who was doing the woke shit and got a lot of pussy for it too. You know, people call it people call him a faggy fag all the time, but a motherfucker get more pussy than the motherfuckers that were calling him a fag. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, but he's a loser nowadays because he's over here begging for attention and shit, begging Richard Simmons for approval. Fuck you, Bobby Shore, you're embarrassing yourself. Fucking shit. Anyways, cheers, Gomer Kyle. Thank you for the comment. Uh. Oh, Anthony Timmons, this hog motherfucker on, on the Richard Simmons versus Polly Shore. He says, sounds like a cat fight. Oh, yeah, but your pussy's fighting and shit. That's what I say. Um, I don't know. We'll see how this ass turns out. Polly Shore is, I mean, when you first go and ask for approval from the person you're going to make a biopic from, and he says no, why would you even continue on your fucking, you know, your shit. If the, if you were going to do it, then just do it without even asking him for permission, you dumbass. You're going to go over there and he's going to tell you no, and then you're still going to do it. Then you look like a dick. That's all I'm going to say. And you look like a pussy now begging and asking for forgiveness. Fuck you. Anyways. 
Cheers, Timmins. Thank you for your comment and shit. And I'm gonna smoke to you. Ah, oh, it's Doug on Funny. Let me hit it for this guy. It's been a while, I think. Woke as fuck. Doug on Funny uh, on the podcast video. Broadcast. Sorry. Uh, it's only been 10 weeks into it. 12 weeks. And I drink a lot and smoke. Give me a break. On the broadcast video, he says, I finally got around to watching this. What the fuck? I'm not canceled. Uh, oh, he means canceled for life because that thing was glitching last week like it just did a while ago. He says, your internet is slow or something. It sounds like you have to upgrade from this cricket wireless shit you got, son. And fuck you. Anyways, great show as always. Cheers. Hashtag. You know what? I'm thinking maybe it is the fucking internet. Uh, God damn it. They don't have Google Fiber over here. And even if they did, I couldn't afford that shit. Not in this Joe Biden economy. Fuck you. Uh, so yeah, sorry, man. The way it is, you know, not until we win the lottery. We're going to fucking upgrade to the max. I said, we're going to have a real studio. We're going to all white Mormon sober uh, staff taking shit from me all day. Bitch, you're doing it wrong. You make, make me look good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. Anyways, but not not now. These, these are the these are we're paying our dues right now, Doug I'm funny. Son of a bitch. Cheers. Thank you for commenting. Everybody's gotta pay your dues. Everybody Holy shit, motherfuckers, I just forgot. I left the beer in the fridge. Shit. <laughs> Fuck. Uh they're a little frozen. Whoa. All right, I just broke the ice on that. Joku, you're supposed to remind me. <laughs> I froze the beers. Hey, it had been a few weeks since the beers got frozen like that. I'm trying to break it now. Because uh, in a little bit, I'm going to need a, I got about this much left. So let me, I'm going to chug this and open a new beer. And I, a frozen beer for you, Doug Unfunny, but it is chugging the last chairs. Thank you for commenting. That right there. Get it a new one. I'm trying to clear all this ice off of it. It's all wet. Shit. That's what she said. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Cheers to you all. Happy Friday. I'm glad you're all are, are safe and sound at home. Hope you're doing what I'm doing tonight. Cheers. Waited all week for this. Ah. Oh. All right. Uh, Gomer on the oh god damn it, it did it again. Gomer on the Poly Shore video. If I ever get to it, here he is. Uh, he says, Watching your video again, this reminds me of something my dad would have said. Oh, what I said about both of them are pussies. Richard Simmons, you're a dumbass for using Twitter and faking your own death, scaring everybody. And fucking Polly Shore is pathetic. For fucking begging Richard Simmons for approval. Dumbass. Uh, he's... I mean, anyways. Continue. Sorry. Got on, got on subject. Gomer says, Polly Shore looks like he was... Hashtag shit right out of Richard's hashtag ass. <laughs> His father for sure. LOL. Cheers. I think I said something like, Polly Shore is the only motherfucker who has aged so fucking bad. That he actually looks like Richard Simmons and resembles him. Uh, so he's the only one that could play him. You know? In, the, in re all reality, I think uh, Polly Shore's got a point. But anyways, Gomer continues and says, By the way, my dad liked Polly because he loved the movie Son-in-Law. And I'm in, in, in the army now. Hashtag. Like I said, I, I have all those movies. I have all those Polly Shore movies. I ain't gonna lie. I have them all, and my favorite one is Jury Duty, to be honest with you. Well, no, I, no, I take that back. My favorite, and it's everybody's favorite, is Encino Man. 
Encino Man's always at the top of everybody's list, you know, because it's it's really not a Polly Shore movie. Polly Shore is more like a secondary character. It's a, it's a fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, George of the Jungle, Fat Whale, motherfucker. Uh, Brian, Brandon Fraser. It's his movie. Uh, star, uh, co-starring, uh, what's his name? Sam Will. Sam Will, uh, from fucking Lord of the Rings. Austin, Aston, fucking, ah, Austin something. I forget who's in the Goonies and shit. Him and, and Polly Shore were the side characters and his other uh, fine little chick that was in it too. I like Encino Man. Encino Man was such a good fucking nightest movie, bro. It had everything in it. It was fucking badass. I think that was Brendan Fraser at his best because he had to pretend to be a fucking caveman and somehow get the audience to fucking love him. And you did. For everything he did. It was badass. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, then Jury Duty is the, the one that I like the next. I think Biodome's the least favorite. Um, it's because, you know, the Baldwin guy. God damn it, it was gonna fuck it up. I think Baldwin was also in the army now. Son-in-law was good and he had that hot chick. Um... That was in that fucking Sin City. I forget what that lady's name is. That lady's kind of kind of cute. Uh, son-in-law. Tia Carrera was in that fucking uh, jury duty movie. And Stanley 2G. Fucking badass. Anyways, Polly Shore was a shit back in the day. He fucked up somewhere in life. Cheers, Gomer. He did go. He was in the Goofy movie. I love the Goofy movie. It was bad, 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 badass. He's the Cheddar Weezer. You're right. You're right. Carla Ju Guino. Guingo. Guingo. I don't know how to say that. I'm sorry. I wasn't good at grammar. Some fucking Italian name and shit. Uh, yeah, that chick is cute. All right, let's move on. Oh, a new guy on the Kenan Thompson's D Dan Schneider connection. M. B. B. White. And actually, I went to, because I didn't know what MBB wiped meant, and I went to his channel just to see his name, and I think it means my my butt's been wiped. <laughs> his channel's called My Butt's Been Wiped. <laughs> Cheers, this motherfucker! I can't believe you got away with naming your YouTube channel that. But, uh, <laughs> because... The 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 Keenan Thompson video starts with the ending of the last segment, and the last segment was the <laughs> the 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 uh, uh, Winona Judd's daughter was arrested for prostitution. It was like the ending of it, and this guy says, "I would do the Judd chick." <laughs> Cheers, motherfucker! <laughs> That's fucking hilarious, bro. Uh, I actually started laughing when I when I like I got a notification on my phone for that one. I didn't. I was like, I don't remember doing the Judd video. Like, I didn't do a short video, and then I remembered. Now nah, this one starts with that shit because it's the ending <laughs> of it <laughs> as a transition to the next subject. <laughs> That's badass, bro. Uh, cheers. Hey. Has he got a picture? Is that him with Joe Biden? This small fucker <laughs> taking selfies with Joe Biden. I don't know who that is. I honestly don't. I, I don't remember. It's been a, 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 a while when I when I saw his. And I think I only looked at the top. I wanted to see what that name was. Shit, my butt's been wiped. That's a badass name. <laughs> Cheers. I would hope everyone's butt's been wiped. Mine certainly has. It's been wiped and licked clean. All right, don't worry about it, you motherfuckers. Um. Oh, let me make sure this is the last comment. Refreshing right here. Oh, it is. It is the last comment, and it's none other than Houston Texas' own very own Jose Trevino. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Me tienes envidia, puto. <laughs> Cheers, Joe Trevino. We love you. The raunchiest best intro out of all you motherfuckers, you fucking woke Packers motherfuckers. Let me hit it for you motherfuckers. Whoa, whoa, whoa.
live. All right, all right. This guy says, another thing, damn. I think YouTube took my rant slash comment down. I actually fucking uh, commented to him. And I, I, I Jose Trevino, because I, I went and I was like, he, he says he, he think I'll delete it. And so I went to our, our, our shit and it, I even looked where it said, um, uh, uh, approve or, or waiting for, held for, uh, approval. Or, you know, when somebody fucks up and they ask you for permission, do you want this comment to show? I went there and there's nothing. So they didn't even give me the option to approve or disapprove whatever fucking profanities you wrote. They, they just deleted it because I can't, I don't even see it. So yeah, YouTube uh, apparently deletes y'all's comments without even letting me know what you wrote, apparently. Whatever racist, misogynist, pedophiliac shit you wrote, Jose Trevino, got you deleted, you dumbass. You better quit with that ass. That's all I'm going to say. Anyways, uh, let me continue with his comment. <laughs> he goes, anyways, that dark guy is probably in the same camp with Alec Baldwin and his Zionist ways. I bet him, Zers, is all about exclusivity. Um, the dark guy, that's the fucking guy from Canada with the white face. And then he puts the fucking, uh, the maple leaf in blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, a Jewish motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to go search for like the dark guy. And then I was like, oh. <laughs> Jose Trevino is on top of the pop culture. I'm telling you. If we ever get legit, we win the lottery. This channel goes legit. I'm going to have all you guys. Fucking Jose Trevino is going to be the pop culture guy. Because he, he's more on top of it than me. <laughs> <laughs> this son of a bitch. He even knew about the... What did he say last time? The dabble verse. I was like, what is he talking about? It took me like... Like I watched it all night. A bunch of YouTube videos to know what the fuck this guy was talking about. <laughs> this guy's on it. Cheers, Jose Trevino. You fucking asshole. We love you. <laughs> Alright, sorry about that. I keep pressing number ones here. My fault. Anyways... That's it for the comments. Don't forget, these are the social medias for Twitter. It's at Sonoman665. For Instagram, it's at the underground broadcast. You got to put the underscore between the words. And on TikTok, don't even bother subscribing to that shit because they're, they're going to fucking delete it. We're not even uploading videos anymore because they ban me all the time or they mute me. Fuck you, TikTok. You communist sons of bitches, Joe Biden loving motherfuckers. Uh, so yeah, sooner or later, that's not even going to be allowed in the United States. You know, I don't understand why Joe Biden's all about their policies. You'd think he would love TikTok, but he hates it. Uh, so it doesn't matter. But if you send me anything to the Twitter or the under or the fucking Instagram, I'll post it here in the beginning before I read the comments, like I just did earlier for Joku and Gomer Kyle. You know what it is. So cheers to you guys. Thank you for fucking commenting. I appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, cheers. Ah, uh, but um, no, I'm not gonna take a breather. I can keep going. Uh, I thought I was gonna take a breather and shit. Um, uh, you know, do some other heavier drugs, but it's okay. I can keep going. I don't need to do that shit off screen. Don't worry. I can just go like this, and then come back. You won't know what I just did. Uh, anyways, uh, but let's get started. All right, we're gonna start. You know how we do. With the weekly pop culture breakdown. And uh, this week, I'm not gonna lie to you, there wasn't a lot of these sons of bitches let me down. I mean, not even the Yeezy and his wife. They they didn't even walk around naked like they usually do or, or cost debaucherous shit. You know? And frankly, I think everyone's tired of the Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef. So I'm not going to get into it. Even though Drake got his ass. Finally. Got his 
ghost riding ass, pedophile ass, baby having ass, handed to him uh, by Kendrick Lamar. And everyone too, Metro Booming and everybody, Rick Ross, everybody's finally uniting against this Palestinian hating plant. Fake. That's what he should be named instead of Drake. Anyways, we're not going to get into that. Everyone's already talked about it. It's been done. We heard it. He lost. He's done. But we are going to talk about the main shit that happened this week. Because we finally arrived. It is Met Gala season. When all the elite <clears throat> pop open their wallets and their bank accounts and they pay this year was $75,000 Per ticket. I think about two years ago, it was like 40 grand. And the AOC got a lot of shit for showing up with her Chick-fil-A dress. Paying 40 grand from the tax dollars for Joe Biden administration and shit. Well, now these motherfuckers. Now this year, they're paying 75K to go to this costume party. This Halloween party in fucking May. Some fucking debaucherous fucking Illuminati ritual is what I call it. Uh, but let's get let's get into the, the looks and the wokeness. Let you all know exactly what went down this year. It's pretty woke. It's pretty fucking woke. We're going to start with some of the men. And we're going to start with one of the wokest motherfuckers. And the most popular gay man in Hollywood, Coleman Domingo, who set the standard and went in there. With his bling blinging, his eyeliner, eyeshadow, the smoky effect, and his badass fucking beard overlapping his nice, big, juicy, succulent lips that I am very jealous of. I gotta literally do an outline and trace it. This motherfucker wakes up in the morning and he's got it. Son of a bitch. Uh, anyways, he looks woke as fuck. He perfect. I mean, this is perfect for him. This is like him. Uh, in, you know, this is like, this is the way he wakes up. Plain and simple. He didn't even need to get ready. The motherfuckers like they made the Met Gala for me. But speaking of motherfuckers that were made for the Met, Met Gala, none other than woke as fuck Jeff Goldblum, looking like the Count of Monte Cristo slash the Matrix. I think the 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 fucking theme of this year was the Matrix because the motherfuckers went all out. Motherfucker wearing his Agent Smith uh, slash. Uh, John Lennon glasses looking woke as fuck and he even has an extra pair in case that one falls or breaks or gets smudged He's not even gonna bother cleaning it. Oh, I got a, a, a fingerprint on it He's gonna throw it on the floor and pull out the new ones and put them on He's not gonna clean that shit. Those are $1,500 fucking sunglasses and shit Protect him from all the flashes motherfuckers taking pictures of him Then we got Sebastian Stan with his matrix inspired look uh, ready to kick someone's ass because he's the winter soldier, you know, and it's gonna be like uh, Not the lead role, but more like a supporting role to flo big ass Florence Pugh the new black widow And you know, she's gonna be the lead because she got a big ass That's all people like nowadays. I do. Oh, yeah And then Usher uh, out of all motherfuckers shows up looking like fucking Zorro and a flower a red fucking rose Just just like that in a hat they say that P. Diddy personally dressed this motherfucker head to toe. He put his socks on and everything. His jock strap. He put everything on him. Tip to toe. He dressed him. Of course, P. Diddy didn't show up. You know why? I gotta explain it to everybody. All right, but those are some of the men. Let's get into some of the women. Kim Kardashian, this is what everybody was talking about this week. Kim Kardashian showed up with this fucking corset that was super fucking tight. I mean, honestly, I think this bitch has had ribs removed just like Talia has. Uh, if y'all don't know who Talia is, she's a Mexican pop artist. Y'all look her up. She's hot as fuck. She was a uh, Married to, to, no, she is married to Tommy Motola, the head of Sony and shit. Uh, that Michael De Michael Jackson, he was a Satanist and a devil. And Mariah Carey says he is a crazy motherfucker. That's why she she, she left him to Mariah Carey. He used to be married to Tony Motola. Uh, but anyways, that bitch had ribs removed so that she could have even thinner a waist 
And she could, when she danced in Mexico, her hips and shit, and it, it's fucking freaky as fuck. Uh, but I think Kim Kardashian's has had the same surgery, because how the fuck does a human being fit into something like that? Unless you're missing a couple of ribs. Just saying. Oh my god, that's it. She, I don't know, that must have been hard to breathe. She probably didn't eat for days just so she can fucking wear that. She couldn't even walk and shit, I bet. Anyways, uh, Kara de la Venge, de la Ving, de la Vengeke, whatever the fuck her fucking foreign name is. Uh, I think she just came out of a fucking drug bench or a meth bench, and I don't know what the fuck she's wearing. Um, it looks dumb as fuck. But it's probably expensive. Like, really expensive. I'm just gonna say, I mean, I I probably would have to work my it would be that her top. Her little stupid ass fucking helmet top that she's wearing is probably worth five of my fucking year salaries. Five year salaries for me. If not maybe ten. Fuck it. It's worth ten. Cause I think I don't make a lot, to be honest with you. Michelle Williams! Woke up too, drunk and high as fuck. Her fucking hair missing, so she, they just drew fucking with a Crayola. Her hair, with a pink Crayola, they fucking drew her hair on her. She forgot to wear pants, but that's acceptable nowadays in Hollywood. With her skinny ass little legs, no tone whatsoever, no muscle mass at all. Her little Ozempic body and shit. Um, and then the ghoul herself, Demi Moore. Um... God damn it. I mean, I'm, my eyes are fucking mesmerized because it's like one of those things. That, you know what it reminds me of? Of those fucking, uh, those plants that the bugs are all like, oh, look at all the pretty colors. And then when you're there, the plant eats you and shit. That's what this is. You know, it's like, oh, like, uh, you get closer and she's going to snap and eat you with her lizard. She's a lizard. Uh, yeah, she's there. Those are women's that showed up. So the motherfuckers, they didn't get the, the hint on how to style and they were a little too fucking weird. Here's some of the weirdos. Uh, unfortunately, uh, what's this guy? Ed Shireen, motherfucker. I think, because he looks lame as fuck compared to all the other extravagant motherfuckers. Ed Shireen looked like he just came out of a fucking quinceanera and shit. With a lame ass fucking cake colored fucking pastel blue and shit. His tie's not even on. And ass. And where the fuck is that little thing you wear? And she's in the quinceanera. You dumbass. That's what I'm gonna say. Will's kids. Uh, Will Smith's kids came out as well. Jada. Or not Jada. Uh, Jaden and Willow showed up. Of course, you know, they're confused as fuck. So Jaden doesn't know if he's a girl and, and, and Willow doesn't know if she's a boy. So they all wear like skirts with, you know, men and, and she doesn't even know if she should wear pants or not. So what happens when you don't raise the kids right. They don't know what the fuck to do. Dwayne Wade showed up with his wife representing all trans children wearing the fucking trans colors and saying, Ah, oh, shit, I'm sorry, my brand new daughter who was born as a little boy isn't here. Uh, but I'm here representing the movement. So he was there too, uh, looking miserable as fuck while his wife is trying to belong in a scene that doesn't even accept either of them. Cheers. But we had more weirdness and motherfuckers that just didn't know how to coordinate. All right. Because Lizzo showed up as one of the dune worms. I mean, at the top, it's got all these frizzles and shit ready to eat you. It's like she's, you know, like a worm coming out from the sand and shit. Just say. Uh, fucking Lana Del Rey apparently was in some sort of gangbang or, you know, a bunch of guys, producers raped her or something. And she didn't have time to shower, so she smelled like sex and ass. So she decided to just wear one of these fucking net things over her so the flies couldn't get to her. Because of all the fucking stench that was coming out of her. Um, and then fucking Cardi B, this is actually a badass. She was a, she, her favorite movie is actually Spider-Man 3. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3. So she came as a Venom, the Venom symbiote. She says, it's taken over me in ass. And she literally said ass because she's, she's hood like that. 
Uh, so cheers to these fucked up women who didn't get the hint they were doing the Matrix this year, you dumbass. Anyways, a person who did steal the show this year was none other than Zendaya, who showed up with two outfits. I'm only going to show one of them, the most extravagant one. But she showed up and shit. You know, she got the Matrix all going, all black and shit with all these flowers. But there was this, like, homeless kid that was following her around. And they, they quickly escorted that son of a bitch out of there. You know, the motherfucker was, like, talking British. Talking about, like, oh, I'm with her. I'm with her. And they said, now get the fuck out of here. You fucking loser. You're not cool enough to be in here. And they kicked him out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know who this kid was following her around. They got him the fuck out of there. Uh, Zendaya, you know, just watch out. You don't want these druggies, you know, next to you and shit. <laughs> um, but the winners of the night. These are my personal picks of the night. The best dressed who stole the show, who said fuck you everybody, was none other then the very sexy Shakira, who came as the the lady in red, you know, the one that Neil sees, the woman in the red dress that Neil sees, and shit, the guy pulls out a gun, you know, yeah, 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 when he turns around, that's what she came at, like, oh, did you see the woman in the red dress? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the fucking hot as fuck, Shakira. And then Tide, there's a Tide for the men. These motherfuckers came as the wokest Matrix characters there could have ever been. El Conejo Malo, Bad Bunny, came out dressed fucking pimped as fuck in the most retro. I mean, John Lennon never even wore these kinds of fucking glasses or fucking the Morpheus ones. This motherfucker took it a step further. These glasses are like fucking diamonds and shit, black diamonds. That's badass. And he's got some red streaks on the side. That's fucking pimp with a hat. And we got motherfucking that Barry Cogan or whatever the fuck this Irish son of a drunk son of a bitch Ezra Miller wannabe motherfucker. Woke as fuck. Probably fresh out of licking cum from the fucking sink. Oh, you know, that somebody spilled the night before. Shows up here looking vintage as fuck. Just saying. To me, these three fucking embodied what the Met Gala is all about. Every year, celebrities forking over $75,000 for a ticket, spending millions of dollars uh, fucking on the suits they wear and the costumes and shit. Yeah, they embodied it. And to them, I'm going to cheers. We're going to DJ Horn for, the, for my pick, the winners. You know, everybody else was pathetic compared to these motherfuckers. Cheers to these guys. Um, but a serious issue that I want to talk to you guys about is all these celebrities and a lot of them weren't even celebrities they're just rich people you know that nobody knows but they fucking there's a lot of pictures on the internet oh, who the fuck is this it's just some rich motherfucker some daddy inherited money so they get to buy a ticket and show up and be next to the celebrities wearing weird shit there's a lot of people on there I don't even know who the fuck they were 75k millions of dollars are made every year when they make the Met Gala and every year all the proceeds go to some charity every year you know and, you know to help the hunger and the homeless and all this ass and would have thought is the year 2024 what charity were well, they gonna fucking be donating the millions of dollars that were brought in uh, is it gonna be like for for hunger for the kids in Africa? Is it gonna be for the fires over there in Hawaii for the Ukraine war for Israel? I don't know the Palestinians maybe the BLM's Joe Biden youth. I mean, what the fuck? No, my friends this year the millions and millions of dollars that were raised by all these rich assholes are going to go to the Institute of Costumes so that they can make more costumes for these rich pricks next year. Cheers! <laughs> Millions of dollars were raised to be given back 
so that they can have new costumes for next year. <laughs> wow. Um, I want to be rich, you guys. I'm getting tired of getting screwed. I mean, they're screwing all of us. I want to be on their side. Don't you? <laughs> oh, my God. Fuck you, Joe Biden. Somehow this is all your fault, you old man. All right, we're moving on with this ass. It's pissing me off talking about this shit. The Met Gala and all these motherfuckers coming around here and shit. Fuck you. One of these days, you're going to see some of man at the Met Gala. And I'm going to be the winner there wearing the best costume and shit. I'm going to go as a fucking, uh, 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 a Logan, um, maybe like a, like a cross. Like a Logan Captain America or something like that. Like a Wolverine Captain America. So a cross between two superheroes. Just fucking wow the shit out of these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? So the man will be there one of these days. I'm just letting you know it's gonna happen. Met Gala 2030. Son of man. Bitches. Cheers. Anyways, like I said this week, ah, uh, the Yeze stayed indoors. His wife kept her clothes on. Uh, not a lot shit went down. Not anything that was worth even mentioning on our channel. So I'm sorry. Super Saiyan Joku. I don't have no voluptuous young Kim Kardashian clones without any fucking plastic surgeries. Natural. Hotness goddess. Foreign goddess. We don't have any of that French shit. Hairy pussy. Uh, but we do have one of the greatest 16 time World champions, woo! Ric fucking Flair, the man. To be the man, you have to beat the man. And he's the man, motherfuckers. Woo! I tears of Ric Flair. <laughs> well, unfortunately, Ric Flair Embarrassed himself in AEW. <laughs> uh, I'll lead you into this video I'm about to show you. But basically, this son of a bitch took his family. Uh, not Charlotte. It's his other daughters. His other ch Ill illegitimate children he had with all these women across the nation. He took them and, their gr and his other grandchildren from the other illegitimate children. You know, some of them are black. Who knows? They're all different. You know, this guy got around. Leave him alone. He's the greatest womanizer of all time. I love him. Sons of bitches. Well, he took him out to one of these Applebee's chilies, one of these small fucking places over there in Florida and shit. And, uh, and he claims that he was disrespected. This first came out on Twitter. Okay, he claims he was disrespected and he said, I spent Fifteen hundred dollars, and I even tipped the lady a thousand dollars, and they fucking uh, they they kicked me out and shit. And the reason this all got started, according to Ric Flair, is that he went to the bathroom, and he saw the chef or man, one of the employees, saw an employee, didn't wash his hands coming out of the bathroom, and Ric Flair got pissed. And he started making a scene and complaining and, and getting mad at people. And uh, and then he got kicked out. And he left. And he complained on social media. Well, now the restaurant, somebody released this video. And with all honesty, the video is after whatever Rick was complaining about. But, well, I'm just going to let you see the way Rick was complaining. Here we go. Yeah, good. Well, I've been there wrong. You said spend money and put this place over and bring my family and friends here. That is bad for you. Why would it be bad for me? Well, watch social media tomorrow. I don't follow social media. Well, you better. I don't think it's talking like What's your name, Nick yeah. Job? Nicholas what? Yeah. Hold on. Nicholas Dickhead. You don't have to call me like that. Sir. Don't ever talk. You don't have to call me like that. 
You don't have to do this to me to humiliate me and my family. I'm not humiliating. I didn't do one thing wrong. I walked into the bathroom. And you called on my kitchen manager. And oh, you're a kid of my cost. That's really, what, what world do you live in? Okay, that's what I'm talking about. same world you live in. What world do you live How did I cost him? Did I cost him? You said, you I never said a cuss word. You know, is that his word or it's yours? I didn't say one cuss word. Okay. Oh, God. No, ma'am, I'm going to give you a thousand dollar tip just to say to him, kiss my ass. If you walk outside here, you don't have to be disrespectful to me. So we're being I know. You, you are good. You're disrespecting me. How am I disrespecting Tell me to leave. I'm not telling you to leave, but I'm just telling you that you're cut off. Oh, I'm cut off and I'm not. Really? Yes, sir. You know, man, it's not bad tonight. It's your man. That man can have, man. Oh, man. Please give yourself a thousand dollar tip. All right, all right. I'll let me do it. Thousand dollar tip. This guy and I are so cool. She and I are cool. And long come the gym shit. You don't have to call me like that. I never did. I never did. I got, I got, I got, I'll say it again. You're a gym shit. Okay. Right oh, I'm leaving. Trust Thank me. God. I won't come back yet. Thank God. Come on outside here and talk to me like a man. I'm not going to do that because I'm on the car. <laughs> you for sure. You're on the pussy block. You know, I'm going to go outside. You want to go outside? Hey, you want to go outside? You want to go outside? You want to go outside? I don't work here. I don't give a shit. No, no, that's not good. I'm sorry. You have a pizza. You want to eat? What's that? No, sir. Please stop. Please stop. Okay? What did you say to me? What did you say to me? Yo. All right. Um. I can't wait until I'm that old so I can be like, you're on the pussy clock and shit. I'm going to give you $1,000 to tell this guy to kiss my ass and shit. <laughs> Did y'all see that other drunk asshole that he finally had enough? You want to go outside with me, old man? I'll knock your ass out. We're both drunk, but I know I can still land one. You're old, so I'll knock you out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god look maybe rick flair's legitimate original argument was legit about hey you're an employee you didn't wash your hands after you just came out of the toilet you son of a bitch but that wasn't on film what was on film was drunk rick continuing his rhetoric when people are politely telling him we're not gonna serve you alcohol anymore <laughs> <laughs> because you're acting crazy um and rick went online and like i said he posted this on twitter and he complained he said fuck this restaurant and so then this restaurant posted this and shit to show that well i mean like, you know that's him being disrespectful i love rick flair but you know this is a this is drunk babble all right like i said maybe his argument was legitimate maybe even as a drunk drunkard he did see somebody an employee coming out of the fucking toilet not washing his hands and he felt the need to complain but he's already drunk and he starts complaining and this is what you get i mean this could very very easily happen to me and I think any one of you all watching this channel right now is all I'm going to say. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Ric Flair, like I said, once again, has publicly embarrassed himself and the company he represents. So just to let you know, I don't think we're going to be seeing him on AEW or Woo Energy Drink uh, on the air anymore or for at least a few months. You know, the last time it was the the whole uh, fucking uh, dark side of wrestling that they <laughs> they talked about him doing the helicopter to that lady. <laughs> well, now it's this. God damn it, Ric Flair! You're just you're cursed, my friend. You don't have any good luck. You know, you're 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 living in the worst time to be living in. 
the Joe Biden youth run the country and the Joe Biden youth can cancel you just like that. Joe Biden youth are managers at the Chili's and Applebee's you go and you fucking work at or you go and eat at and drink at. So you can't fucking act a fool and start showing your dick to people because they're not going to fly anymore. All right. Those days are over. Rick, they're over. Just letting in, letting everyone know. Just so you know that shit is over. Anyways, I'm still going to cheers to Ric Flair because he's a 16-time world champion. And when this man dies, it's going to be a sad day. So cheers to you, Ric Flair. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Let me take a turn all this off. Oh, yeah. I'm going to cheers again. I don't give a fuck. We're ending this. All right, let me get a new beer. We can this shit this shit on the road. All right, I got a brand new beer here. Cheers. Happy Friday. We're done with the weekly pop culture breakdown. <clears throat> and let's get into the comic book nerd shit of the week. Uh, yeah and uh, this week we were given the first behind the scenes image of the stand-in stunt actor <clears throat> for Liam Hensworth The Witcher season 4 and he looks faggy as fuck and I mean that in a bad way. Because usually that's the highest of compliments in this fucking channel. But I mean that in a bad way. I'll tell you why. This dumbass. How do you... And, and this is not Liam Hensworth. This is a stunt double. So he doesn't look like him at all. But I'm complaining about his attire. Because it looks modern. It looks modern. How do you go from this look that looks ancient and old and another fucking, you know, they don't have technology to the guy with a leather jacket and a fucking, the, you know, the belt. Like, I, like, you know, motherfuckers that used to go to the fucking, what is that, American Eagle and shit. They used to wear the belt, their belts like that and shit. Fuck you. The gloves or the leather jacket. What the fuck are you doing for the... This is going to fail. And Chris, Chris Hensworth's brother is never... His career is never going to take off. Because the idiot he hired to be his fucking agent convinced him to take over Henry Cavill. Idiot. This looks dumb as fuck. It looks dumb as fuck. Uh, no one's going to watch this. No one who was into the original three seasons of The Witcher. Because a lot of people were not. But no one who's actually into it is going to see this and say, I'm interested. They're going to hate They hate this. Everyone on Twitter is shitting all over this dick. And I understand why. I mean, look at this guy. Even the goddamn stunt actor is like... God damn it, this is probably one of the shittiest side gigs I've ever gotten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being a rodeo clown is fucking better than being this fucking guy here. Trying to be Gerald or whatever the fuck his name is and shit. I never played the video game, I bought it because it was 20 bucks. But god damn it, that game was too damn old that even the mechanics and the working of controls felt like ass. Like it was like 15, 20 years ago. And I was like, nah, man, I don't want to play this dick. I'm going to play some Assassin's Creed, some modern fucking shit that responds to the clickings. I'm trying to jump this fucking dumbass. Doesn't even do it right. Fuck the Witcher. And fuck the games. And fuck this series. That's all I'm going to say. Fuck you. Cheers. 
<sighs> Anyways, let me get into it, get it out of the way for a little bit. But I highly, highly recommend each and every one of you to get on. Uh, is it Paramount or Amazon? I don't even know. I'm going to have to fucking search this while I talk. But it's probably Paramount or Amazon or some shit. Uh, but ARC, the animated series, is amazing. It's on Paramount. Paramount Plus. It's six episodes. Six one-hour episodes. It's animated. And, man, this is not for kids. <laughs> I'm showing you some of the shit. Like, there's a little boy. That little boy just got it, eaten by a T-Rex. The little boy's like 10 or 11. <laughs> and they do it to show a girl, like, this is what happens when you don't follow the rules. <laughs> and they feed the little boy to the T-Rex, and she sees it and gets horrified. Um, it's fucking badass. It's such a good show. And as far as, like, the caliber of animation... The it's it's amazing. It's amazing. It's it feels like this is back to old, you know, drawings and shit like that. Um there are so many actors in this. So many actors in this. Voice actors. Vin Diesel, Elliot Page, believe it or not, in some of the flashbacks, and some lesbian shit. Even though she's a little boy, she plays a lesbian in it. Uh, Gerald Butler, Carl Urban, Michelle Yao, Academy Award winning actress, David Tennant. Oh my god, the list goes on and on. There's so many. Russell Crowe, you sons of bitches. Uh, Alan Trudick, or whatever the fuck. Uh, there's so many fucking Jeffrey Wright. I'm just going on. Like, there's so many fucking people. Uh, Malcolm McDowell. God damn it. There's so many fucking people. They got to voice all these fucking animated characters. This. Uh, I, no one's talking about it. No one's reviewing it. No one's talking about this. This is a very, very good fucking animated show. And if anybody has ever played, I know Super Saiyan Joku, I talked to you about it, I think. Uh, I played, uh, he's played Ark. I played Ark, uh, the base game, when it first came out. Uh, I, I actually went out and, and I, I went and I found one of these companies that own servers. And I paid for my server for the whole year. So I got to play in my own island without any interference or other players attacking me and shit like that. So I got to play, and my friends would come into that island. So I, we all, we pay, I paid for the whole year. So we had a private server, and only the people I gave the password to could come in. And so we would go in there and play. We played for a few months. We didn't. I mean, I paid for the whole year, but we really only played for five or six months, and then everyone moved on to another game. It happens. That's the way it is. Um, but it was just a base game, and it was so much fun and shit. And the game doesn't really have a story. It's kind of like Zelda that you have to look for the story. You find books, and then you find clues, and you kind of piece it together. But basically, the books and the stuff you read in the game is the, the, the story. It's like stories from the people that were there before you. And so you're reading the books and the diaries of people that were there before you, and you're piecing together the story. That's basically what this is. It's all the what those stories that you find in the game. It's these characters. And it's so fucking sick as fuck. It's basically, if you know the story of Ark, I don't want to spoil it for you, but I'll just tell you what this story is because I could spoil what it what's really happening because I played the game, so I know what's really happening. But I'll spoil you the series. A bunch of people who thought they experienced death, they died, suddenly wake up and like after they died, they wake up and they're in this world. It looks like fucking prehistoric times and shit. And everyone they meet is from a different time. Some from Roman times, some from modern times, some from, you know, different times. And they don't know why they're there. And some of them think this is purgatory or this is hell. This is what happens when you die and you fuck up. They put you here to survive. And some people are there. This is a test. This shit. Uh, I know what's really going on because we played the game. Me and Super Saiyan Joku. I don't want to spoil it. 
uh, because this is barely season one, they already did season two because at the end of this, they show you clips from season two that's coming eventually. This is great. Underrated. I mean, I don't know why no one is discussing this. No one is talking about this or even mentioning this. They're really good. It did. It, this came out a few weeks ago, so it took me a, a while because I've been watching other shit. It took me a while to finally get around to it. But I wanted to review it and let you all know and advise you that you need to watch this if you have Paramount or you have a Windscribe VPN, by the way. Uh, get on your Jack Sparrow base and download this ass because it's really, really fucking good. Um, this is, this is good animation. <laughs> and gory. I don't like to say gory for animation because, uh, you know, it's a cartoon. But there is a lot of shit. I mean, you see hands getting severed. and I mean, you're, I'm showing you some of the clips. It's pretty violent. It's very violent. And like I said, I think this guy is being played by Gerald Butler. This fucking... It's like this guy from Roman times. His name's Nerva. He's like this commander. Uh, and he's fucking crazy. And then he's, he fights this fucking... It's fucking badass, bro. It's all to be continued because they're going to be season two. But it's fucking badass and characters die left and right. And that little boy, that was like episode one. Or yeah, that little boy, they just, he just. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? That little boy, like 10 years old. He just fucking got eaten by a T-Rex. What the shit? To made an example of. That fucking, I was all like, wow, I didn't know there was going to be that kind of show. In fact, the first couple of seconds she meets, you know, there's the, like, when you play the game and if you just choose the default character without changing his style or anything, the way the default character is and looks, that's the first guy she runs into when she wakes up is that guy <laughs> and that guy dies right away He's, don't worry i know how to survive here i can help you Psh, he fucking died you're gonna spoil it but he dies right away and i'm like what the fuck is going on this is crazy but if you play arc that's the way the game is you will die right away as soon as you start the game if you walk really far, if you walk too far away, you need to, right there where you wake up, you need to start doing stuff and collecting. If you start taking a few steps, you might die right away. And that's the way this is. It's fucking fun and, and it's great. Recommend this. Highly recommend ARC, the animated series. Uh, hopefully it gets renewed for three and four seasons more. I will definitely keep on downloading these and watching them for sure. Good stuff, good stuff. Cheers to this. But I want to get into the main ass. And it's none other than James Gunn. The great and powerful Oz himself. Here we go. We got the big reveal. Finally. Uh, but before we get to the big reveal, I'm sorry about that. Uh, David Cornswit got pumped as fuck. He showed this picture that he was working out and trying to get bigger than Henry Cavill and shit. So yeah, so all you naysayers, this motherfucker is getting pumped and he's not skinny anymore. But that's overshadowed by what everyone else is talking about. They've been men talking about all week. Is we finally saw. The reveal and in asinine James Gunn fashion he has to make it super dramatic and it's a picture of Superman putting on his suit while there's some kind of crazy death ray being shot at a ball in the sky or the ball in the sky is shooting the death ray down to earth, probably killing and destroying millions, which would be even worse than what I'm saying. This is one of the most stupid, ridiculous, most embarrassing reveals of a costume character slash movie that's ever been done. And it's all from the mind and ass of this dumbass over here. This fucking 
uh, 76 year old, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. This fucking 12 year old in a 76 year old's body. Fucking dumbass. And yeah, let me explain to you why. God damn it. His suit looks very, and I mean very, cheaply made. For a goddamn movie that's probably costing in the hundreds of millions of dollars, why does the goddamn costume looks like something cheap? This guy, and we showed a picture already, looks so pumped as fuck. How in the fuck? Are you telling me that the suit is super loose on him? It looks baggy. What's going on? He just showed a picture earlier this week and he's huge. Why does the suit is bigger than him? Loose. Look at that. All those creases and shit. God damn it. You know, I ain't going to be flat out and say it and I'm going to get a lot of haters. I hate it. The Zack Snyder suit. I hated this piece of ass. I hated how dark blue it was. I hated how it didn't have red trunks. It had some weird shit in a circle in the middle like a belly button. An ass. And it looked like it was scaly. Like little lizard scales. I hated it. I hated it. But at least this looks like it, was act like it actually cost money. This look like a professional studio made it. This looks like some fucking dumbass cosplaying motherfucker spent the whole year building a rubber suit and then fucking putting it on. Cheap as fuck. Cheap. Cheap, 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 cheap. Fuck you, James Gunn. You dick. <sighs> you know what bothers me about this also? Is the presentation. Why couldn't you just show a picture of Superman standing in all his glory with the suit bright, maybe tight, fit it on the fucking actor. But you gotta put a picture of him putting it on. And people are gonna say, oh, that's why it's loose. Because maybe it's not tied. He hasn't put the, the, the you know, he hasn't tied it. He, he hasn't, the laces in the back, he hasn't tied it them. So it's loose. He's barely putting it on. Fuck you. That makes it even worse. Look in the background. There's just some kind of ball in the sky about to crash. Somebody's shooting a laser at it. Or maybe it's shooting a laser down. Destroying and killing millions. And this son of a bitch is taking his sweet ass time. Putting the fucking suit on. <sighs> All while destruction is happening in the background. And why is it dirty? If you're taking a sweet ass time, could you not get a brand new one so you can look clean as fuck going out to fight? James Gunn, you're a fucking idiot. And if this is a shot from the movie, I can tell you the movie's gonna suck ass. Because if this is a shot from the actual movie, <laughs> those those special effects look worse than the goddamn shitty uh, rubber babies from the Flash movie. The CGI rubber babies from the Flash movie. They look worse. They look like photoshopped and shit. I hope this is not a shot from the movie. Oh my god. Warner fucked up. And James Gunn is about to sink this ship. Once and for all. Yeah. It really is. I feel like Kevin Feige actually sent James Gunn covor co co covertly into Warner to fucking destroy them. To finish them off. Run their franchises into the ground so that they 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 are forced to not release any Superman, Batman, no movies for the next 10, 15 years until the public forgets. 
I think that's what's really going on here. Kevin Feige paid this guy millions of dollars to go over there and fuck them over for them. Because Kevin Feige knows we fucked up. We're screwed. We're not going to make any money with this, all this woke shit we're doing. You need to go over there and fuck them over. And that way, maybe we might get some of the, some of the money trickles over. And then people are like, ah, oh, this is ass. And they might come over and watch this ass. We won't get billions, but we'll get some millions back. And that's really what's going on here. Maybe. I don't know. Or, you know, maybe James Gunn really is a dumbass. And that's why this, this is ass. Ah. We will never see Superman ever again after this movie. We'll never see another movie. We'll never see anything ever of Superman ever again. Thanks to James Gunn. That's how bad this movie's gonna suck. Fuck you, James Gunn. Fuck you. Moving on. To some more ass. Because apparently, Sony didn't learn their lesson after their Madam Web debacle. And they are now moving forward with a live-action Spider-Gwen movie. Let, let's see what other, what little girl fucking ends up signing up for this ass. Because they're probably not even going to do this movie justice. <sighs> for any of you who don't know Spider-Gwen's origin, I will tell you. It's in another universe. And it's literally Peter Parker's. Instead of Peter Parker getting bit by the spider, Gwen Stacy gets bit by the spider. And she gets superpowers. And she relies on her best friend, Peter Parker, to help her out as she becomes the new... And actually, in the comic books, she gives herself the name the Ghost Spider, which is why she has white. It's the Ghost Spider. Marvel, for whatever reason, dumped that name and just went with Spider-Gwen. But whatever. Um, the ghost spider and then Peter Parker because he's his friend he wants to be powerful like like her best friend so he comes up with a way because he's a nerd with a with an injection and he injects himself and he becomes a lizard and that's her first villain that she fights you know because at first she's just stopping muggings and shit but that's the first villain the lizard he's running around killing people and so she stops him and she fights him and she kills the lizard. She beats him to death. But when she beats the lizard to death, he transforms back to Peter after he's dead. And then she freaks out because she realized she just killed Peter. That's kind of her with great power comes great responsibility from. Because she's like, just because you're strong and powerful doesn't mean you can just kill anyone you want. Because look, you just killed your best friend. You didn't even know he was the lizard. He was transformed. And from after that, the police, you know, because the police arrive as, as she's holding dead Peter. And they think she killed Peter Parker. And so she's a vigilante from then on. The ghost spider is a vigilante. That's her comic book. I don't think Sony is going to adapt that the correct way. Sony's just going to fuck shit up trying to make this the cool girl, hipster, motherfucker, and all this shit. And, and, and no vigilante, no the cops are chasing me. Sony's going to fuck this up. I was a huge fan of Gwen, Gwen uh, Spider Gwen, uh, the ghost spider. I have the first arc from the beginning. The first issue, I have the first whole arc. All of the comic books. The art is great. The story is great. Everything's great. I love it. Um, I'm a big fan. And I think Sony's gonna fuck this up just the way they fucked up Madam Web. The way they fuck they're gonna fuck up, or they have already. We haven't seen it yet. But the, but the trailers, I can tell you they've already fucked up Craven the Hunter. And they fucked up Venom and everything else that's come before. Fuck you, Sony. All you're doing is killing and destroying everything. Everything I've spent money on the past 15, 20 years. You idiots. You're ruining. You could have been taking more money from me. But no. Instead, you got to do all this ass. You ain't getting no more money from me. 
the only people getting money from me is the electricity bill and Winscribe VPN. Oh, yeah, and my internet service provider, unfortunately. Fuck you. Cheers. One of these days, we're going to have a Starlink on this ass. Elon Musk is going to be the only one sending us the internet super fast. Fuck you, Google Fiber. Fuck you. We're going to skip you. Cheers. Uh, but speaking of Sony, ass, or, or them shitting on stuff. It's actually coming to the Sony slash Disney, but you know, it's part of Sony, so we're talking about Sony. But the new rumor is that Disney, Sony, are now eyeing James Wan as the director for Spider-Man 4 with Tom Holland. This crazy Asian son of a bitch that has been doing the conjuring and the nun. And all this like Abigail and all these weird shit. And he also did the the, uh, the shitty Aquaman movies with Amber Turd. Rumor is Disney, Marvel, slash Sony are eyeing him as the number one contender to take over for the Tom Holland franchise coming up. Because the other guy quit. He said, nah, I don't want to do these movies anymore. Fuck you. Yeah. You're gonna be crazy. Cause this guy likes horror shit. He also likes a lot of CGI ass. Um, it makes me wonder what type of fucking movie Spider-Man 4 is gonna be. A CGI horror fuckfest? Imagine. Morbius. Jared Leto comes out with Tom Holland. <laughs> Oh my god. You know, this was maybe tied into Midnight Suns, but Spider-Man doesn't belong in the Midnight Suns. I don't know. I just, I don't understand why he would be a choice. This is a rumor. But I don't understand why he would be a choice because of the movies he's done. He's done mo mostly, besides the Aquaman, mostly he's done horror movies. Horror movies. So I just don't understand how you can go from being a horror movie director to doing Tom Holland Spider-Man movie. You know, fucking campy. Uh, fucking 16 Candles type of shit. It's just weird. It's fucking weird. And I, I just, I don't think this rumor has validity to it. But a lot of people are talking about it, so I wanted to talk about it here. Who knows? That's just the weirdest fucking shit I've ever heard this week. Uh, I hope this is not true, just because I don't I don't think he's a good fit. At all. I don't. Not for this franchise. No. Give him a Blade movie. Give him Moon Knight. Give him dark characters. I think he would be good. Don't give him Spider-Man. Tom Holland. He don't make no sense. I wish the Rooster Brothers... You could give Spider-Man to the Rooster Brothers... Oh, they would ground the shit out of it and make it so good. So good. Wilson Fisk and shit like that. Oh, my God. But we, unfortunately, we're not getting that. The Rooster Brothers said, fuck you, Marvel. We're done with your homosexual shit. And they left. The rumor. I don't know. I'm just repeating what I heard. But speaking of homosexual shit, Roberto Iger has come out and has said that in the next coming years they are reducing the amount of Marvel ass they put out every year. He says we're no longer going to be putting out four Disney Plus Marvel shows every year. Four. All of them six episodes. All of them 45, 40 minutes, maybe 35 because they, you know, the credits and the intro, all of that takes up time. Maybe only 35 minutes long. Paying all these actors 20, 40 million dollars. Just to be there for a week. Costing over 200, 300 million dollars. More than a fucking movie for a fucking stupid show. That people are paying 13 dollars a month for. 
a lot of us are just fucking using our Wizcry VPNs to download it. So you know we're not paying for this ass. So this guy's saying, we're no longer putting out four shows. We're going to reduce it to two shows a year. And as for movies, which we had so been accustomed to, before Tony Stark died, by the way, we were already accustomed to four movies a year. He says, we're only going to get two movies. Maybe if we make profit off of one of them and we have extra cha-ching, we might put out three a year. But we're going to reduce it also to two years. And shit. <sighs> All I'm going to say is this, man. We've already, since COVID started, we've already seen a reduction in the content you put out. We have. This year alone, 2024, the only Marvel Disney. I'm not saying Sony, Marvel Sony. Marvel Disney movie that they are putting out. The only movie is Deadpool Wolverine. They're not releasing anything. We're so used to four movies a year. This year, we're only getting one movie. And then next year, two. And then slowly. When the fuck are they ever... You know why they're doing this? It's because Kang the Conqueror beat a white woman. And so they, now they gotta wait 20, 15 years till the public forgets that he beat a white woman. And then they're gonna... We finally have Avengers Part 5! Versus Kang the Conqueror. And everybody's like, who is this guy? Oh, yeah, he beat some girl. Well, who cares? Let's just watch the movie because we've been waiting 15 years for it. That's Roberto's Eigert's fucking plan. They're just stretching this out because Jonathan Majors fucked up. Now we got to wait for all this ass. That's all I'm going to say. And shit. Uh, this is dumb. And, and, and it's going to fail on them because they're going to make less money because he thinks that putting out two fucking shows a year and two movies a year is going to make them more money is stupid. And I'll tell you why. Because the shit they're putting out right now is ass anyways. So if you're going to put out less ass, it's not going to make it any better. It's still going to be ass and people are still not going to watch it. So you're still reducing your profits. You idiot. The only thing that's going to change this is Biden getting out of the White House. Everybody get more money. We're all going to get stimulus checks from Trump and shit. That's what it's all about, motherfuckers. That's all I'm saying. Fuck you, Robert Weiberg. Cheers. But so we are talking about Disney. Let it be known right here this week. Maybe a day. Maybe yesterday. I don't remember when the fuck. But now they said that Disney is teaming up with another failing studio. They are so desperate to make up the money that they've lost from all this Marvel and Star Wars and Pixar woke ass they've been putting out for the past four years. They've lost billions of dollars more than Warner Brothers, the Marvels. Is the worst fucking grossing movie of all time. Even worse than The Flash. That goes to show you how much that piece of ass costs. That piece of ass lost Marvel more money than The Flash. Ezra Miller, that child abducting criminal fucking Brie Larson lost them more money than Ezra Miller did. Yeah. Let it be known. So Disney is now forced to team up. With Warner Brothers to make up all the money they've lost from all that ass. And coming this summer to all you dumb simps who pay for shit. You will now be offered a combo of Disney Plus and Max. Ching! Probably Add it with an extra bundle of Hulu and ESPN because Disney has stocks in those shit. So now you're going to pay $30 a month for all this fucking programming and ass. 
Not to mention that if fucking uh, Warner ends up buying Paramount or Sony or whatever, they might just all come together and sell you one big piece of ass so you can have all the trashy shows and all the, the bad quality all served to you on a silver platter. Right there from the privacy of your own home. That's how desperate they're getting. People are unsubscribing from Disney Plus. HBO Max. They're taking too goddamn long in these Game of Thrones uh, fucking spinoffs. People are don't want to pay for the for waiting for months for we need new shit every week. Half of the country's on drugs. All these kids that are being bored nowadays are fucking ADD as fuck. We need new content every week. You idiots. You're one of the stupidest shits I've ever heard. Fuck you, Warner. Fuck you, Disney. And fuck you, all you dumbasses who are going to end up paying for this. And I don't know why you still haven't downloaded Winscribe VPN and don't what the rest of us, the rest of us out there do. Cheers. But just like that, I have to stop and interrupt the entire fucking show. Because one of the greatest motherfuckers out of Houston, Texas, just showed up. Jose Trevino! Repites tu nombre, por favor. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano, mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Oh, yeah. Envidia, puto. Oh, yeah, che. And you know, we're still live. Oh, yeah, cheers, Joe. Thank you for being here, you son of a bitch. Love you. All right, let's keep on going. Hey, uh, you know what, Trevino? I'm glad you just showed up. Because I was about to get into this. All right. Ha! <laughs> this is perfect. We're about to get into the Marvel ass. And we're going to start with none other than Fat Anthony Mackie, our brand new Black Captain America. We got a new behind the scenes fucking picture of the director, whoever the fuck this guy is. This, this fucking, uh, fucking uh, Spike Lee wannabe looking motherfucker. And some other actress, some woke as fuck black chase is going to come out in it. Probably come out for five minutes, but probably be important. And then uh, Anthony Mackie. And, uh, you know, they're there behind the scenes and shit. And I'll just put it like this. Anthony Mackie's face says it all. And God damn it, Doomcock was right. Cheers! <laughs> We had reported months ago that Doomcock had said that Anthony Mackie had a mental breakdown on set. That he started throwing chairs and was yelling at the director and at everybody and was all like, can I please get a fucking script? What is this gibberish with notes and shit? We don't have lines. You're telling us to improv. What the fuck are we doing? We're going to have to do reshoots in three months. Because this is ass. Here they are doing the reshoots. <laughs> Here they are doing the reshoots. And Anthony Mackie's face says it all. Because here's the script. A bunch of bullet points and notes. That fucking uh, Kevin Feige sent down. Look, that's not even a full script. That's got a few pages all crumbled up. Probably just with bullet points. Because nobody ever wrote a script for this movie. They, according to Doomcock, no one ever got a script. There's never been a script. Most of it is improv, and it's just bullet points and little notes that they hand at the director, and every day they would come in with new notes. Here's your notes for today. Film this. No lines. Nothing. Mackie has been angry the whole time filming this. This is ass. It's going to be ass. Um, they're going to make the trailer look pretty. You know how they always do. They make the 
You know, remember how I, Thor, uh, the fucking, uh, what was it called? The last one, Love and Thunder. Remember the trailer looks so badass. Oh shit, this movie's gonna be epic. <laughs> Ah, uh, remember Doctor Strange looked amazing. We saw, we saw the uh, Xavier's chair. Oh shit! <laughs> and then we saw Doctor Strange. <laughs> oh, they're gonna make this trailer look amazing. It's gonna look like Winter Soldier. It's gonna look amazing. <laughs> And then we're gonna see the movie, and it's gonna be Fat Anthony Mackie pissed because <laughs> he doesn't have a script or any lines. Tears! <laughs> oh my God, I feel for Anthony Mackie, man. And I and then, you know what? It is racism. Those motherfuckers could have gotten him a trainer. He could have been buff as fuck. Sons of bitches. Instead, they let him just fucking eat Applebee's and blooming onions at Outback Steakhouse all night long, every Friday night with all his friends and shit. Fucked up. Uh, we'll see when this trailer arrives. Some people already saw it on the Disney 23. That shit, people pay $500 for a fucking ticket, you privileged white sons of bitches. They got to see the trailer before any of us. All the motherfucking paid plants that Disney and Marvel pays. Heavy spoilers and all you pussies over there, fucking new rock stars, they pay you. They give you the shit before they give any of us. Sons of bitch. Theory time, theory time. Fuck you, you saw it. You saw the whole series before any of us. Pussies. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm moving. I'm, let's move. Let's keep going with the show. Get a little heated -he -he here. The big news this week is that we have casted. Well, not we. Marvel and Disney have casted Galactus. And then it's none other than this British motherfucker. His name is uh, Ralph Ennison. I don't know who he is at all. I don't watch British shows. I hate British television. I try to watch the British office because I the office is my fucking next to Seinfeld. And Seinfeld is my favorite series ever and then it's uh, the office and then it's a uh, uh what, what is that called the one with dr fraser craig fraser 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 craig that shit's funny as fuck i know i know I, I, out of all people i like it i like fraser uh anyways i tried to watch the british office and i hated it all right i hate every british show british comedy everything you know ricky gervais I can accept because he makes fun of Americans and I understand what he's talking about. But a lot of his shows, I don't understand the slangs. I don't understand a lot of their, their the way they talk. Like, it's like, God damn it, some of them motherfuckers talk like they, they're from the North. The motherfuckers from the real North, they talk like they fucking got golf balls in their, in their mouths. So it's really hard to understand them. But the, and then some of them are drunk too, the ones from the North. So it's hard to understand them. And so that's why I don't fucking, I mean, I, I just like, I don't even bother with it. And even with subtitles, I don't think it's funny because I don't understand their slang. I'm like, how is that funny? What does that mean? Bollocks. What the fuck is bollocks? Fuck you. Anyways. So I had to go on the internet and search who the fuck this guy was. And I went on YouTube and I just searched the video of acting. I put I put his name, you know, I put fucking, you know, Ralph Innocent acting or scene. And I push play. And he's got a voice like this. Really, really deep. He's got a fucking deep ass voice. Scary deep. He's perfect. He's perfect. I mean, you're not gonna know it's him because he's gonna be wearing a fucking metal helmet and shit. But at least his voice is perfect for what they wanted Galactus. Because before they chose this guy, the rumor was they wanted Jav Javier Bardem. Me llamo Javier Bardem. Yo vengo de América del Sur. Soy un latinoamericano. Actor Javier Bardem. They wanted Javier Bardem. Because they wanted a deep fucking voice. Some motherfucker that sounds like he's had COVID from birth. And this motherfucker sounds deep. Deep as fuck. 
I, I, I heard his voice just by playing the first YouTube video that came out. I pressed play. And the minute I heard the first syllable coming out of his voice, I said, he's perfect. He's perfect. When you have a guy, a giant fucking celestial being that is like bigger than even planets, his voice is going to sound deep as fuck. This guy's voice is amazing. Uh, if you don't, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure none of you motherfuckers, if y'all are American like me, you don't know who the fuck this is. So you're not, you know, fucking well-versed. I'm not well-versed in shit or culturized. You know, does it look like I've ever been outside of the fucking county that I live in? All right? Everything I, everything I know is what I see on television. It's shit, as you can see. Um, so yeah. I don't know where he is from or what movies he's done, but I looked it up on YouTube. And if you don't know, just look it up on YouTube. Just to type in Ralph Innocent scene or whatever. The first video, I promise you, you're going to say his, he's perfect. Like Unicron or, or Orson Welles. Yeah, he's got a fucking deep ass voice, bro. It's perfect, bro. I mean, it's deeper than. My name is my name is Adam Driver. I, I was in Star Wars. I was Kylo Ren. It's deeper than Adam Driver's. You know, that 10 foot tall alien for the Pleiadian system, star system. Um, he's perfect. You know, I think he's going to be perfect. Most of it's going to be CGI. He's going to go in there, record his voice and get paid millions of dollars. This son of a bitch is going to get the easiest job in the world. Fucking dick. I am jealous. Uh, but speaking of talent, they also announced this week that the great John Malkovich has joined the cast of Fantastic Four. My name is John Malkovich. I don't know why this guy's perfect for this fucking movie. He just is. I mean, already the talent they had. I'm, I'm, I'm sad they didn't get Javier Bardem. I'm sad they didn't get Javier Bardem to be Galactus because he would have been perfect. You know, especially because they now they got John Malkovich on here too. But then they also got Pedro Pascal. You know, and they got all these, they got these like real fucking. This cast is really, really, uh looking up to be good like academy award winning good none of these guys i don't think uh, maybe john malkovich but none of these motherfuckers have gotten academy awards but they're all really good caliber actors that's so all i'm trying to say but john malkovich has now been cast in a mysterious unannounced role in marvel's fantastic four the possibilities are endless he could be the stupid little robot, which I hope he's not. That would be a waste of this man's talent. Why would you want him to come in and record his voice when you can have his face and his features and his acting on screen? Whew. I am getting excited at the very thought of thinking that we might have finally our Victor Von Doom. Victor Von Doom. Ha <laughs> ha! I am getting so excited because what if this son of a bitch is going to be the Doctor Doom. The one who will continue in the MCU. He's perfect to be Doctor Doom. I never would have thought Doom sounding like Malkovich would be so amazing. The possibilities are amazing. And the, the minute they said mysterious row, that's what came on to my head. Oh my god, because that other guy, Dan Housen, or whatever that fucking guy's name is, and shit. That guy's probably gonna be the robot or the mole man, just like people are suspecting. 
But this guy, the caliber of actor that he is, he needs to be Doom. He needs to be our Victor Von Doom. Who figures out the multiverse and at the end because remember this movie's gonna take place in another universe there's no x-men there's no fantastic food there's no fucking uh mcu heroes it's another universe and only they exist it's their world he is gonna be the one who discovers the multiverse and at the end of the movie when the fantastic four get pulled into the mcu he will sneak in there and go along with them it's his plan all along because he is doom Ah, uh, I hope he's doomed. It sounds great. It uh, it feels great. But at the same time, it worries me because, you know, the track record Marvel has done, he might just end up being some fucking janitor and some hot dog guy serving the guys a cameo, some ass, some scientist, some guy who doesn't matter. And that would piss me off. Ha. Uh. That the great John Malkovich would be reduced some, to some kind of fucking secondary role. Some fucking bullshit. Um, but it's Marvel and Kim Feige, so you never know. It could happen. We could, could just, this, this, this might just end up being ass. Mm. So to that, I gotta smoke. But anyways, we are gonna move on to some more Marvel Disney Rumors, not confirmed. Malkovich was confirmed. All right, that was 100% confirmed. This is still rumors, but this is a rumor that a man with a certain set of skills has joined the MCU. Liam Neeson's. The rumor is that Liam Neeson's has joined the MCU and he is ready to bring her certain set of skills to the MCU. Holy shit. You know, right away, because we've already been talking about it just now, if fucking John Malkovich ends up being some side character, some ass, doesn't even matter, insignificant, some fucking cameo for a minute, Maybe this guy is Doom. Because Doom would sound like this. Oh yeah, cheers! Liam Neeson's Doom! <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? This motherfucker? Ha <laughs> being Dr. Doom. I mean, who else could he be? He could be like, you know what? I just thought about this. What if he's not Doom? What if he's... Magneto? Oh, yeah! <laughs> Imagine Liam Neeson's... I just ran out of this beer. As fucking Magneto for the X-Men because, you know, fucking Sir Ian McKellen's too damn old and this guy's... Kind of old, but, but still kind of young enough. He could be the new fucking Magneto for the MCU. Wouldn't that be something? Oh, uh, yeah. I am the master of magnetism. Get ready for these magnetic skills. Oh, yeah. He's perfect. That's all I'm going to say. Cheers. <laughs> Um, I don't know who else he could play. I think he's too old to be sinister. He's too old to be any hero, period. Um, he has to be a villain. And Magneto would be the right age if, if they're going for that. I don't know if they're going to go for a young man. I don't know what the MCU X-Men will look like. I'm pretty sure the MCU X-Men will all be gender-swapped and race-swapped. That's a given. All right? That's a given. But genders, they might. I don't know. They might go, you know. Some of them are gay, lesbians, non-binaries, non males or females. They're going to be switched. They might. I think Roberto Iger 
is still debating whether he wants to push the envelope. But for sure, they're going to be raced swap X-Men. Some are going to be white. Some are going to be black and Asians and Palestinians and shit they've never been before. It's going to happen. And I might accept it. As long as the story is good. And the actors are good. That's all I'm going to say. I might accept it. Because I, I, they're different universes. And you got to understand the, uni the MCU is not the comic books. It's a different universe. So things might look a little different. And like I said, I might accept it. I had a hard time accepting the Ultimate Universe when it first got started. But the stories were... They killed it. But I got hooked on the Ultimate Universe. And then I got mad when they fucking destroyed it. And now it's back. I don't know. I don't collect comic books anymore. I just read online. You can get everything for free online. There's no reason to buy anything nowadays. You know, As long as you have your Winscribe VPN. Buy that. Cheers. Uh, I don't know. Leon Neeson joining the MCU. Who is he going to be? Who the fuck knows? That's a rumor. Another big rumor that came out. Get ready for this. This is a, this is a huge one. They're saying that for the X-Men MCU, they have approached one of the future leaders of the free world. Not this coming election. It will be two elections from now. He might be the leader of the free world. But one of the future leaders of the free world. Marvel and Disney approach suppo supposedly rumor. Dwayne the Big Cock Johnson to be none other than El El Sabanur Apocalypse in the MCU. Holy shit. This is probably the most exciting rumor I have ever heard in months, in weeks. This is the perfect casting, especially because Kevin Feige apparently is sticking to, and they always have from the beginning of the MCU, making the costumes look just the way they look in the comic books. I mean, when they made Thor, I thought they were going to do to Thor, maybe what they did to the X-Men where everybody was wearing black. But no, Thor was just the way Thor looks. He In the first movie, he even had the little helmet with the wings for a little bit. So I was just like, wow, they're actually trans Captain America translated everything. They're translating it the way it looks. At least Marvel Disney. Marvel Disney. Remember, there's Marvel Sony. Marvel Disney and Marvel Fox before. Marvel Disney at least has been trying to stay true to the color palettes and to the actual designs of the original fucking comic books. And when you look at Dwayne, the big cock, Johnson, he's Apocalypse. He's built like Apocalypse. His head is egg-shaped like Apocalypse. And all you gotta do is draw the fucking lips across and to his ears. His ears aren't even there, the way Apocalypse is. He's perfect. He is the most fucking perfect rumor casting that I've ever heard of. They said they went and they, the rumor is that he's had meetings and the meeting was specifically for him to be the big bad for the X-Men. Probably in the background. Because the big bad, the rumor is, is going to be Sinister. Sinister is going to be the new Magneto in the new MCU. And probably in the background... Pulling the strings of Sinister is going to be Apocalypse. He's perfect, you know. And Apocalypse was always slow talking and just, I am the, the god and I am here to show all you mutants that I am the ultimate. Whatever the fuck philosophical shit he was saying. And The Rock is kind of dumb, so he could fucking talk slow and talk like that. Um, ah, This is perfect, man. This is perfect. And I can't wait until one of these nerds who lives at home with their moms in a basement, doesn't have to have a job like the rest of us, and work 45, 50 hours a week just to survive in Joe Biden's fucking economy. I can't wait till one of these nerds make a fucking Photoshop art of The Rock as the fucking apocalypse. Whenever they do that, I'll show it here. It's going to be badass. That's all I'm going to say. 
Um, yeah, I like this rumor. It's a rumor. I hope it's true. I hope The Rock agrees and says, fuck DC. I'm never going to be Black Adam. James Gunn is a dick. He fired everyone. So I might as well jump ship and go to Marvel. Try to be something else. Reinvent myself. I hope he does that. Who knows? Great rumor. Another rumor that actually was said maybe years ago. Maybe we actually talked about this two to three years ago. We said a rumor. And we actually showed some of this art that went along with this rumor that somebody had posted on Instagrams and shit. They had posted this uh, years ago. Uh, we talked about it. But now it, this has started up again and they're stating that a lot of the Disney Plus shows because Roberto Igard is saying we're, we're getting rid of all this woke shit. All this shit's not making us money. And so we're trying to focus on how we're going to make money and make up all the losses and shit. We got to give people what they want, what they like. So now this might actually be a, a new thing that they're doing. But the new rumor is there's going to be a new series on Disney Plus that is being greenlit and flash forward. Like, hurry up and get this done. And it's going to be a series about how... And remember, we did say last week or the week before that Chris Evans said he was coming back to the MCU 100%. Uh, that he signed back and he's coming back in some form or fashion. I think he's going to come out in a cameo in Deadpool as the Human Torch. But apparently he's going to come back for the MCU. And this new rumor is that he's going to come back in a Disney Plus series that will finally show Captain America returning each of the Infinity Stones after he went back in time. And then stayed with Peggy Carter. So they will show him. And his journey. If. Roberto Iger. And Disney Marvel. Do this. This is gold. And will win. A lot of the fans that have left. Their fucking stupidities. They've been putting out. I'm already on board if this is true. These are some of the best photoshops I've ever seen. And god damn it, they make them look good. This is good stuff, man. If this is... That would be a great story to see him go and return each stone. And then encounter the Red Skull and talk to him and shit like that. Each episode is each stone. What are the six stones and shit? So six episodes, one hour long. And each one, he has to deal with the shit. Like, he has to talk to Thor again. He's in the Time Stone. Everything would be fucking badass and shit of him trying to go and put these things back. And then the last episode would be him going to Peggy Carter and deciding to stay with her instead of going back in time and getting old. Boom! Disney Plus subscriptions would go up right away. Right away. Not only that, but everybody who owns Windscribe VPN, all the piratings would go up right away, right away. Tons of piratings for this shit. For sure. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, we'll see how this ass ends up being. And if it even, even ends up being true. Because we don't know. But something that we might know and that's been lining up and we've been reporting on for the past weeks is a current Deadpool rumor. Deadpool 3. Wolverine. That there is going to be flashback scenes. Which we have already known there will be. And cameos and ass. Cameos galore, they said. Cameos galore. All right, it's going to be crazy. But the new rumor is that we already know in the last uh, last week we said that there's going to be a scene where they're in the campfire and all the dead pools that they gathered, which is the head and the babies and the dog and the disgusting dog and all the other fucking deformed dead pools or whatever. They will be there in a campfire along with Lauda 
the little girl who's X-23, along with Elektra and shit. Uh, and also Channing Tatum's Gambit. And Elektra's going to tell them a story, and they're going to show a flashback. And according to the new rumor, is the flashback is going to show Elektra telling them a story that when they all landed there in the wasteland, Punisher, and not John Bernthal's Punisher, the guy, I forget what his name is, Tom something, Gomer, I'm sure you know, Tom something, uh, that Punisher, Daredevil's Ben Affleck, and Quicksilver, Aaron Taylor Johnson, they went to confront Cassandra Nova there in the wasteland. And she killed them. They never came back. And Elektra tells them that. Flashback story. It's not going to be John Berthal. It's going to be this motherfucker. I don't know if they're going to shoot. Because they say that Affleck is not going to be in it. I don't know if it's going to be a CGI daredevil. That looks like the Affleck suit or something. When they say it's Aaron Taylor Johnson, it might also be CGI. I don't know. But it's some kind of flashback. Or maybe she just tells him the story. And that's the story they're going to tell. And the reason why anything happened. Supposedly in Deadpool and Wolverine. What do you guys think? It's up in the air. And it's just there to let you guys know. Um, all right, we're done with all the rumors and shit. Let's get into the end of the show and the last. Uh, well, the last thing in the show, and it's none other than. X Men ninety seven, episode nine, the last one. Before it ends for season one. Tolerance is Extinction Part 2. Mostly the main shit that happens. The, this interwoven and shit. I'm going to get into details. But basically Magneto comes down with Asteroid M rebuilt. And he tells them, I'm not here to fight. I'm here to convince you. That it's over, Charles. You told me to be the good guy and take over the X-Men. And I did. And I was the good guy. And I did everything your way. And we still got fucked over by the humans. So now I'm here to tell my X-Men that you left in charge of me. It's time to choose sides. Because we did it this bald, crippled son of a bitch's way. We did it his way. And look what happened. Gambit died. The world hates us. The Sentinels and Bastion. So what are you going to choose? Charles way or my old way that now I'm going back to. I'm going to be a bad guy again. Fuck the humans. And Rogue and Sunspot. Roberto Acosta. They all they 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 choose Magneto. Roberto says my parents turned me in, and shit. And Rogue says Remy died. Who else is gonna die next, Professor Gene or Cyclops? Fuck you, old man. You're in your chair there. You don't even come to battle with us. You stay over there in the mansion, you pussy. So Rogue changed sides. Badass. Badass shit they're doing. This is not in the comic books. Like I said, they're, they borrow stuff from the comic books. This is not in the comic books. Uh, so, that's badass. And then, we get into... 
The new suits. The X-Men get new suits. And it's so weird. Because they actually revert back a decade to the 80s comic book suits. They went from the 90s suits to the 80s. And I find that weird. Because they said they're gonna... They, they made it look like an upgrade. But for people like me, who follow the X-Men, it's a downgrade because these are their old suits from the 80s. And they downgraded from the 90s back to the 80s. Now, I'm not saying the suits don't look good. Because I love the 80s suits. I fucking used to play that arcade game all the time. And I love the Pride of the X-Men series pilot that didn't get picked up by Fox. And then they went back and rewrote it and redrew everything. And then they made the X-Men 94 series. And that got picked up by Fox. But the original pilot, The Pride of the X-Men, which is on YouTube, look it up. It's amazing. The animation is fucking He-Man, Thundercats type of style. It's badass. Pride of the X-Men. That's the original pilot. And Wolverine is even Australian. So they knew that we're going to choose an Australian motherfucker to be Wolverine in the movies from the beginning. All that shit. Um, that's all on YouTube. And that's what they downgraded to. They downgraded back to the old suits. And they try to pass it off like, oh, we're getting new suits. It looks badass. I love it. I really do. But my, 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 the smart part of my brain is telling me this is a downgrade. Because how do you go from the 90 suit down a notch to the fucking 80 suit? I thought you would have upgraded a little bit more in the mid 90 suits where they change a little bit more. Maybe, maybe we're going to get that in season three or season two. I don't know. Maybe this was just for the ending of the first season. They wanted to do this. Uh, I don't want to make too much of a big deal because like I said, I do like the way they look. It looks badass. I just, I don't know if this was technically an upgrade. Because Jubilee, Jubilee actually upgrades to the next iteration of her suit. Where she's all black. That's actually the midnight, like past the 90s. That's the way Jubilee went on to look. So I don't understand why the rest of them, instead of upgrading, they downgraded. Bold DeMaio just wants to give you fucking little Easter eggs and little shits for you to fucking come on and shit. That's why they did that. But anyways... Uh, another shit that happened after this is that they split into two teams. And this is so X-Men. X-Men Gold and X-Men Blue. Um, I, when they, they, maybe like five years ago, they tried to do that again in the comic books where they did two separate teams and they went to X-Men Gold and X-Men Blue. I bought, I didn't buy the whole first uh, arc of either of them but I brought the first few issues of X-Men Blue and X-Men Gold because I was like oh they're going back to the old teams back in the day because that's what happened they did split into gold team yeah two teams blue and gold and then they even went into X-Force and X-Factor and then different teams started splitting up after that that's why we have so many X-Men and shit uh, but they split into two teams uh, gold team goes after Bastion which is consistent of Rogue. Um, no, no, I'm sorry. Not Rogue. It's consistent of uh, Cable, Jean Grey, Cyclops, Morph. And they go after Bastion. And, uh, and Storm. And they go after Bastion. And then Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Beast, Professor X. Uh, they go after Magneto. And shit. Uh, and, or I might have some of the order wrong. But anyway, they split up to two teams. When they go to... Bastion was kind of like whatever. Because it was there when they went after Bastion. But they didn't conclude it at all. Or give you any peek. Uh, Sinister obviously ran away. But Bastion pretty much destroyed the all of the X-Men. And then he turned Cable against him because he had uh, some kind of chip inside of Cable. So Cable turned against him. 
Uh, it's almost to be continued because we didn't see what happens afterwards. One cool stuff that happens. All the fighting is amazing. The animation's good. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna deny them that. But Morph turns into the Hulk, and I'm telling you, that is already another sign that we are eventually gonna get Avengers versus X Men in X Men. The continuation of these seasons. If they get to season three, we might see Avengers versus X Men. Because we saw Captain America, now we just saw the Hulk and Spider Man. So this might happen. Uh because those are some of the arcs that are coming. And that lead in that this leads into. So that's fucking cool. Morph he says morph smash and he turns into the Hulk and shit. That was so fucking pimp and I like that. Uh but let's get into the big shit everyone's talking about is the ending. And the shit that actually got me super fucking excited, but at the same time also pissed me off. But let me get into my excitement. It ends with Wolverine stabbing Magneto to kill him. And Magneto fucking turns around in anger and uses his power exactly like the comic books. To pull out the adamantium. As soon as he started doing this. And just started using his powers like that. I knew he was. I was like. Oh yeah. I started yelling right here in my living room. I was like. Oh they're doing it. He pulled out the adamantium. And that is literally how it's drawn in the comic books. I'm not even going to lie. He pulled the adamantium out of Wolverine's body. Oh my god. I went crazy. Because what happens here, I can tell you in the comic books. They're adapting stuff from the... This is not supposed to happen during Bastion. You're not supposed... None of this is related to... It. Like, he's just picking stuff and smashing it together. It's cool. It's cool. I'm not gonna lie. But he is picking stuff and smashing it together. What happens next in the comics is that Xavier gets so fucking mad. That he goes into Magneto's mind and he takes away or what he thinks he do, does. He thinks, Xavier believes that what he does is he goes into Magneto's mind because he's not wearing the helmet. They took it off him. And he blocks the bad side of Magneto and blocks him in his head so it cannot ever come out. And Magneto turns docile. And he doesn't remember his bad, the bad stuff or anything evil and hating humans. And he calls himself Joseph. In the comic books, he goes and he lives in a community with all these Arab origines or all these gypsies or whatever. And he helps them and they build a community. And he's a good guy. He doesn't even use his powers. He doesn't know anything. Eventually, they, could, they remind him that he has powers. The Scarlet Witch, his daughter goes and... He remembers, and but he's not evil. He joins the X-Men, and his name is still Joseph. He's not Magneto or Eric. He doesn't... It takes a while before he finally reverts back to being Magneto. But he's Joseph, the good guy. That's what happens in the comic books. But unfortunately, what happens in the comic books is that when, when fucking... Mag, when Xavier took away... Or blocked Magneto's bad side. He didn't realize that he didn't block it. In his mind. Unfortunately the bad side went into Mag uh, Xavier's psyche. And Xavier developed a personality. That he never knew about. And that personality becomes. Onslaught. Onslaught is basically Xavier. It's actually all the bad side of Xavier. Because Xavier is a human and Xavier has bad feelings. And shit. And once, and in the comic books, it's crazy because they reveal some of the bad thoughts in Xavier. Was that he has the hots for Jean Grey and that he secretly lusts after Jean. But he also thinks of her as a daughter. You know, but Xavier is good. So, you know, he never does anything bad. Or does anything. He tries to grab her pussy or nothing. Grab her by the pussy. He doesn't do anything like that because he's a good person. 
But those thoughts and feelings are in there. But Xavier just, he blocks him away. All those bad thoughts and feelings of Xavier join inside of Xavier, join with the bad stuff of Magneto, and they form this entity. I The comic book I have, and I'm going to show you, I only have one of these. But I, but I, I've, I've, I've read a lot of it online, so I know the whole arc. But I have one of these. I'm proud to have these. This one. But I literally have the one where they find out that Charles is onslaught, and Charles, the Juggernaut is scared because he can't talk. He's Charles took away his tongue or his speech, and he knows the secret that Charles is onslaught or whatever the fuck, or that onslaught is coming. And Jean Grey reads his mind and figures it out. And Charles finds the Juggernaut and he takes away the fucking... The Diamond of Zatarak or whatever it's called. The, the, the shit that gives Juggernaut his power. The Diamond, the crystal that's embedded in him. He takes it out of him. And Juggernaut is reverted back to a nobody, a little human. And that's the episode, that's the comic book you find out that Charles is Onslaught. That it's been him all along. And I have that one. I'm fucking proud of having that one. I didn't even know I bought it when I was a kid that I had that one. Yes. It's coming. Next season. They're going to build to Onslaught. It's going to be fucking crazy. And amazing. I think that the Bastion arc is going to end next episode. They're going to end it. Bastion is gone, and uh, and they're gonna continue with this. They're gonna continue with onslaught, and then onslaught because onslaught also involves the Avengers and the Fantastic Four, the arc. I think they can build, they can combine X, X Men versus Avengers and onslaught together if they're smart about it, because they're already combining other storylines, so they could do that easily. Um. Uh, it takes everybody to beat Onslaught. It takes all the psychics and shit. Uh, it's crazy. It's fucking nuts. And it's coming. Here's what pisses me off about all this. These nerds, new rock stars, and the heavy spoilers, and all these other British dumb sons of bitches, and everybody has millions of subscribers and millions of views, and all that ass. And each and every one of you subscribe to me, subscribe to them, you pussies. I know you are. All those motherfuckers from day one have been theorizing, making uh, assumptions and guesses that that onslaught was coming, even though. None of the episodes, none of the episodes had anything remotely close to Onslaught's story. None of them have had anything close to Onslaught's story. None of them up until this last fucking episode that we just saw where Magneto removes the fucking adamantium out of Wolverine's body. That is the only thing that actually leads into Onslaught. That is the only fucking thing. And somehow, all these fucking pussies from day one theorized that all of this was going to lead into onslaught. Fuck you. They're all paid fucking plants by Marvel and Disney. They send them the entire series a week before it even premiered so they all know everything and guess correctly from the very fucking start. And all you pussies believe them. Fuck you. All you heavy spoilers and you rock stars and all you pussies that said that Onslaught was coming from episode one when they fucking had no clue and no indication that it was coming. This is the only time it ever showed anything that Onslaught is coming. When they showed that Magneto is pulling out his fucking adamantine out of his skin. Because that's actually what leads to that. That is the only indication that has ever been showed in the last nine episodes. And somehow all these pussy ass nerds that are paid by Disney and Marvel knew from the very first episode. Fuck you. You paid fucking plants. YouTube fucking plants. That's what you are. You pussies. 
That's all I'm gonna say. I'm fucking pissed about that. Ugh. We're gonna see Wolverine turn into Beast. Literally, the way Beast looks, but Wolverine with Peach... You know, he's gonna look like a cat. He's gonna turn feral. This is all happening in Season 2. And somehow all these pussies are gonna theorize and knows everything that's gonna happen before it even does. I wonder why, you paid sons of bitches. You know that pussy heavy spoilers literally had the Spider-Man No Way Home breakdown of the trailer immediately after the trailer premiered. How does somebody make a 20 minute breakdown video of a trailer that just premiered a minute after it premieres worldwide. I'll tell you why. Because they sent it to him a day or two before because he's a paid fucking shill. Like the rest of them. You idiots. I'm done ranting for tonight. I'm done ranting about all these fucking pussies and all this ass and this Marvel Disney bullshit. Yeah. I'm done. I'm gonna leave you all with a little bit of word of advice, and that is open your fucking eyes and number one, read the goddamn warning. Pause the video and read the warning before you watch this goddamn show and open your goddamn idiot mouths on the comments and look like a damn goddamn fool. More fool than the motherfucker who's wearing makeup. Looking like a clown. You idiots. Read the goddamn fucking shit and open your eyes and notice when people are lying to you, you idiots. Everything is fake. The news, the goddamn fucking government, the YouTube, all these shit, the fucking music you listen to, they're all paid for. All of them, you idiots. Dumbass. The only people that are real are people like this channel who get 10 views and three motherfuckers watching us tonight, you idiots. Cheers to the motherfuckers here! <laughs> and don't you forget, it's always... Live. I'll see you all next week! Cheers! Live. What the fuck, man? Fucking running like lady, eh? <laughs>